right, let's open. Oh, today's lesson. Put, it, put the title up, the, the thumbnail. Let me have the other thumbnail. I like the other. I like the other thumbnail. Alicia, do you have the other thumbnail? Yeah, with the All right. It's my, it's my glasses that keep making the mic knock off. Yeah, I like that yeah, renaissance that one. Yeah, that one. That one. yeah, I like that one. I like that one. I got Get a horse. Mad. Get mad. I got a horse. Again. Yes. Negro's mad, Bishop. The horse. Get mad now. Call your mama, God, he got a horse again. <laughs> the name of the lesson is the keys to hell and death, the lake of fire. A lot of things have been going on in Israel, but before I get to it, I'm going to go through some scriptures first. I'm going to go through history first, as I generally do, some history. Hey, let's put up the first history clip. Let's read the title of this book. Yes, sir. The Lost Tribes, a myth. Suggestions towards rewriting Hebrew history by Alan H. Godby. Right. So notice it says suggestions towards rewriting Hebrew history because for centuries, since the 7th century actually, well, I'll say this, since our slavery, I'll say it that way, it's been taught that the Hebrews, the lost tribes, are Caucasians. This minister, Alan H. B. Godby, did some research into the Negroes. This was published in Duke University, North Carolina. See that? Durham, North Carolina, 1930. Durham. Let's go inside the book. Let's read the highlighted, yeah, that section right there. These Yoruba Jews claim that their ancestors were driven from oasis to oasis. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what's on the screen. Or at the top. But the... But the body of their thank you. But the body of their language is that of the Yoruba Negroes about them. Four hundred families claim now the word Yoruba. I'm sorry, comes from Jeroboam. Jeroboam, write that down. Go ahead. Four hundred families claim Semitic ancestry and may not intermarry with fetishists, but may may with Muslim families because they are monotheists. All right, so I want you to see that the Yoruba Negroes are Semitic. So he found that out. Raise it up. Go ahead. These Yoruba Jews claim that their ancestors were driven from oasis to oasis by Muslim persecution. Them damn Arabs. Go ahead. Not finding rest even when they reached Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. It suggests that these ancestors may have been of the Dagontans, Dagatons, still scattered along the, tra the trade routes west of the Timbuktu or of the vanished Jewish kingdom of Kamnuri, or of the latter, the later trading colony of Lamlon. At present, they number about 2,000 people in 20 little villages and call themselves by the Hebrew name Benai Ephraim. Benai Ephraim, Benai means sons of, sons of, or children of. That's what Benai means. Got they have copies of portions of the, tor the Torah, kept in a most holy place, but their social life is not Torah controlled. See that? We started to go away from it. Go ahead. It is that of their fetishist neighbors. Right. When we were in Nigeria, and there were Yoruba there, and there were, uh, what's the other tribe there? Yoruba and... Um, Igbo? Igbo. Mm -hmm. I, when I say that they are not keeping no commandments at all, they are not keeping no laws. Mm -hmm. But they say they know the Israel law. But go ahead. Of course, their remaining Judah... I asked them, I remember asking them... What color is Jesus? They said white. Mm -hmm. I said, how the hell are y'all the Israelites? You know you're the Israelites, but then Christ is a white man. The hell is wrong with y'all? It's crazy. Go ahead. Of course, their remaining Judaism is not rabbinical. They retain certain Jewish customs and observe the great holy days. Otherwise, they are simply naked Negro savages. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So they are described by one of themselves, Bata Kendai Amgoza, Ibn Lo Bagola, Ibn. Ibn Lo Bagola, who was carried from Weda, Dahomey. The word Weda, right there, down means Judah. The word Weda means Judah. Give me the next page, please. Some of us getting cut off on the screen. Zoom out just a little bit, please. All right. Yeah. You ready, Bishop? Yes, sir. These facts have a peculiar significance when the presence of Judaism among American Negroes 
is to be considered. Now he's going to talk about American Negroes. Go ahead. Hundreds of thousands of slaves were brought to America from the Western Africa during the days of the traffic beginning nearly 400 years ago. He's talking about the slave trade, right? How much more of Judaism survived amongst West African Negroes in that earlier time? Mm -hmm. As persecuted communities, they were, rather, they were rather more in danger than other Negroes of being raided by war parties and sold as slaves. It may be considered certain that many partially Jude Judaized Negroes were among the slaves brought to America. Can I see that? All right, Kat, read on. Yes, sir. How many of them might still hold some Jewish customs in their new home is another question. On the, on the, on the Cambinda coast in Portuguese West Africa, it is an interesting group of Negro Jews known as Muvumba. They are skillful smiths and potters and consequently prosper. Ratzil considers them connected with a colony of Jews expelled from Portugal and settled on Saint Tomé. Island. Right. Those were the black Jews that ruled in Spain. Go ahead. The, the Moors. The Portuguese discovered San Tome in 1471. Finding it very unhealthy, King John II of Portugal in 1484 offered the Jews of his dominion the pleasant alternative of submitting to baptism or settling at San Tome. So that baptism means be a Christian slave or settle at St. Thomas, which is on the coast of Africa. Great numbers were sent out. Next page. As for himself, he says that his grandfather was one of the black Jews of Nigeria. Jump down. Thus, Bishop Matthews claims an uh, immemorial, immemorial Jewish ancestry. But since that ancestry is Negro, it follows that Negroes were the original Jews. Y'all see that right there? Go ahead. Not of no more. Stay got a bomb. Damn. Go ahead. This is a development from Bishop Matthew's congregation. It has received no help from the white Jews. It observes that the white Jewish papers call them fakers. The white Amalek has always hated, especially when we start to wake up to who we are. Right, right. They say, oh, they're fakers. They're right. not the real ones. That's the same thing. This is back in the 1930s. Go ahead. But, my friends, we are not fakers. Every black man is a real Hebrew, whether he knows it or not. Can I get a bomb on that? I got a firecracker. All right. Give me the next book. Next book. There's a lot more in that book, but just for time's sake. Light and truth collected from the Bible and ancient and modern history containing the universal history of the colored and the Indian race. What year was this published? 1884. 1844. 1844. Excuse me. All right. Just next page, and let's read the highlight. Yes, sir. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. Mm -hmm. Skip it down. Isaiah 20, as they were black, so was he. As he was naked, so were they. Led naked and barefoot, young and old, into captivity. Even unto this day, from Africa. From Africa, go ahead. Their descendants are led away by a wicked people into slavery. Y'all see that right there? So this was written back in the 1800s, that we were led away by a wicked people into slavery. Well, all right. So now, let's open up, Cap, with Luke chapter 13. Yes, sir. Yosef, let me know when y'all get yourselves together over there. Luke 13, Luke 13, and we're going to start at verse 1. I need all y'all to pay close attention. We're going to deal with uh, repercussions. Oh, uh, 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 Olam is here, or Elam, or Oram, or yeah, Oram something. <laughs> oh, praise We're going to talk about repercussions of sin today. Because it seems like we, don't, we have lacked or we have lost the fear of the Most High God. I don't know how many uh, cases of adultery and whoremonger keeps going on week after week. So, Captain Gedaliah, let's open up with that. Is there enough light on me? Y'all know I'm black. you black. And I look real dark in that video, that page right there. Luke 13. All I see is teeth and glasses. But go ahead. Luke 13, verse 1. What you laughing at? You ain't light-skinned. You ain't either. <laughs> you said verse 1, Bishop? Yes, sir. Luke 13. Yes, sir. The book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 1. There were present at that season some that told them of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Pilate had killed some Israelites when these Israelites were attempting to sacrifice to the Lord.
All right, testing, testing. All right. I don't know. No, is it back on? Yes, sir. All right. What was I saying? Pilot wasn't a good guy. Oh, Pilot was not a good guy. You know, Pilot's the same guy to say, um, I find no fault with Christ. People, Christians use that to say Pilot was decent. No. Read this verse one again. Yes, sir. There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He was murdering Israelites that sacrificed, okay? Verse 2, And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? The thought back then, as the thought is now, we often think when people die, especially in a harbor way, we go, oh, they must have been some sinners, wicked as hell. Read. I tell you nay. I tell you no. Christ said no. They but were what? They were not the worst sinners above all. Go ahead. But except ye repent. Except you repent. Ye shall all likewise perish. Remember, he's talking to the disciples and his other followers. He said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So this, this, so that's how, you see, when our people get shot down in the streets, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. But back then they didn't have guns. Right, right, right. right. They was using swords, literal swords. But it's the same example today. Except we repent, we shall all likewise perish. Go ahead. Verse 4. Of those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them. So like when the World Trade Towers collapsed. People, oh, they were the most wicked. No. Watch what they read it again. Or those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them. Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay. Christ said, no, they weren't the worst sinners. Go ahead. But except ye repent. You shall all likewise perish. But except we repent, we can die the same way. Everybody understand that? Yes, all right. From there, let's go to Ecclesiasticus, book of Sirach, chapter 41. We'll touch on death for a little bit. We had our, our sister, one of our sisters passed away in New York. Uh, she had diabetes. Good sister. Decent. Very, no problems from her at all. We got to definitely take better care of our health. Diabetes is nothing to play around with. Sirach 41, Cap, and let's read verse 3 and 4. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 41, verse 3. Fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after thee. Mm -hmm. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. I want you to understand verse 3. Death is the sentence from the Lord over all flesh. Flesh. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody is destined to die. This, this physical body is destined to perish. Okay, go ahead. And why art thou against the pleasure of the Most High? And why art thou against the pleasure of the Most High? Wow, that's heavy. Go ahead. There is no inquisition in the grave. There's no in when you die, there's no inquisition. There's no questioning. Go ahead. Whether thou have lived ten or a hundred or a thousand years. That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. When we die, we are at rest. There's no inquisition in the grave. Now, the precept to that is Job chapter 3. Let's go to Job 3. And let's start at verse 11. The book of Job chapter 3, verse 11. Why died I not from the womb? So Job, he was catching so much hell. He said, why did not I die from the womb? Go ahead. Why died I? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why didn't I die as a baby? Why? Cause remember, Job was catching hell. His kids got put to death. Uh, he lost all his businesses. He got sick. All kind of plagues was on his flesh. His wife was a nag, getting on his nerves. Go ahead. Why did the knees prevent me? Mm -hmm. or why the breast that I should suck? Because you know, in a mother, she's rocking the baby on her knees to keep it, you know. Up and about. So read that verse again. Why did the knees prevent me? Mm -hmm. Or why the breast that I should suck? Read. For now should I have lain still and been quiet. Mm -hmm. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. See that? I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. Go ahead. With kings and counselors of the earth. At rest with kings and counselors of the earth. Go ahead. Which built desolate places for themselves. Uh -huh. Or with princes that had gold. Who filled their houses with silver, mm -hmm. or as in hidden untimely birth? Mm -hmm. Still birth, still birth. Go ahead. I had not been as infants which never saw light. Mm -hmm. There the wicked cease from troubling. That's what I want you to see. There the wicked cease from troubling. Go ahead. 
There the weary be at rest. And there the weary be at rest. Go ahead. There the prisoners rest together. There the prisoners rest together. Talk about in death. The prisoners rest together. Go ahead. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. So the prisoners talking about our people. Go ahead. The small and great are there. The small and great are there. Talk about in the grave at rest. Go ahead. And the servant is free from his master. So when we die, brothers and sisters, when we die, we're all at rest. Whether you are Righteous or you are wicked as hell. You are at rest. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Give me Isaiah 57 in one. Book of Isaiah. Chapter 57 verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. Mm -hmm. And merciful men are taken away. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. So here Isaiah says the righteous is taken away away from the evil to come. Go ahead. He shall enter into peace. Notice, he sh when you die, he shall enter into peace. Go ahead. They shall rest in their beds. They shall rest in their beds. Talking about the chambers of rest. Go ahead. Each one walking in his uprightness. That's what I want y'all to see. Each one walking in his uprightness. When the righteous die, they are walking in their uprightness. They are walking before the Lord. Everybody understand that? Meaning so, what? They're not really dead. The right now, the, 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 the wicked are at rest. They're asleep. But the righteous are up talking before the Lord. Give me that one real quick in Revelation 6 to show you that more. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. Yes, sir. And when, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying... See that? Notice. Remember, they're dead. They cried with a loud voice. What? How long, O Lord, mm -hmm. holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So not only are they walking, but they're talking to the Lord, asking for vengeance. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. So we got to get that in our minds. Understand what death is and what it is not. Okay, from there. Hosea chapter 9. Now, Christian churches go crazy. The Christian church is insane when it comes to dying. Read that, Hosea 9 and 7. Hosea chapter 9, verse 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. The days of judgment are come. Israel shall know it. The Israelites, you shall know it by reading the scriptures. Go ahead. The prophet is a fool. You're going to find out that the prophets, these preachers out here, are fools. The spiritual man is mad. The spiritual men out here are insane. They're crazy. For the multitude of thine iniquity. <coughs> For the, the multitude of what? For the multitude of thine iniquity. Uh huh. And the great hatred. You know what that great hatred is? These preachers, these ministers, they have a hatred against the laws of God. They have a hatred against doing what the Bible says. I'm going to show you a clip. Show me that first clip from Instagram on a preacher talking about hell. You're going to be the lead, in the lead position in hell. He said, my wife going to hell. My kid's going to hell. Hell, hell, hell. The drummer going to hell with one stick. He took one stick from him. So what the hell? These dudes, that's right. Read Hosea 9 and 7 again. <clears throat> yes, sir. Hosea chapter 9, verse 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. These prophets are fools. These preachers. The word prophet is preacher. They're fools. Go ahead. The spiritual man is mad. The spiritual man is mad, meaning insane, psychologically defective. Go ahead. For the multitude of thine iniquity. For the multitudes of sins. Go ahead. And the great hatred. And the great hatred against the word of God. That's why, brothers, when, if you notice, when brothers sit down with church ministers, they tend to say, let's not read out of the Bible. Yeah. Let's just talk. That's the great hatred against the word of God. They hate the scriptures. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the various ways hell is used in the Bible, okay? Psalm 16 and 10, 
references the graves. Write this down. Hell is used in the context of the grave. Let's read that. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Yes, sir. Psalm chapter 16, verse 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Corruption, like when the, when the, when the worms eat you up, okay? You're being corroded in the ground. So notice he uses the grave as hell. Everybody see that? Write that down. Hell is called the grave, okay? Another one. An another, I'm going to give you some references on how hell is used as, write this down, a low state of being, oppression, slavery. Hell is used as a low state of being, oppression, and slavery. I'm going to give you a few precepts on that. Let's open with Isaiah 28. Y'all wrote those down, right? Let me know if I'm going too fast. Isaiah 28, let's start at verse 15. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. Mm -hmm. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we may lies our refuge. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So what I want to show you now, they made, our leaders made a covenant with death and hell. I'm going to show you some examples of that right now. Psalms 116, verse 3. Psalms 116, verse 3. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 3. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. So notice how he uses hell in this context. The sorrows, talking about sorrows of death, he ain't dead yet. He says the sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell. So in great pain, like Job, the prophet Job was in great pain. That's called hell. Get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. So y'all see how he uses the, hell, the word hell in this context, right? I'm going to give you another one. Zechariah 11 and 5. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, and verse 5. Now, this goes more so with Isaiah 28, 15. Put this one next to Isaiah 28, 15. Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. Remember what we read in Isaiah 28, where it said um, uh, our, our rulers made a covenant with death and hell. So when we read Zechariah 11 and 5, it says, whose possessors, meaning owners, slay them, it's about slavery, and they kill us, hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord God, blessed be the Lord. Then it says, for I am rich. They make money, they profit off selling us in slavery. Then it says, and their own shepherds pity them not. Our shepherds are our rulers. The leaders of our people that made a covenant with death and hell. So this is what it's going into. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. Give me Isaiah 5.13. Book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity mm -hmm. because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore... Hell have enlarged herself. Stop. Back to verse 13. Look, what is this hell talking about? Verse 13 again. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Stop. Read 14. Therefore, hell have enlarged herself. So here Isaiah is using the term hell for captivity. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So read 13 and 14 together again. Yes, sir. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore... Hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Descend into it. It's about captivity. So now, I'm going to show you another reference for hell. Matthew 23, 33. Write this down. Damnation. Damnation. This is the one that many Israelite camps don't want to discuss. Matthew 23, verse 33. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? You see that? The damnation of hell. 
Okay, so now we're going to get into this, what this hell is talking about. All right, let's open up with, or uh, well, let's continue on with 2 Ezra chapter 9. 2 Ezra chapter 9. And make sure y'all got the videos ready for me. 2 Ezra chapter 9. Let's start at verse 1. Yes, sir. 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Go ahead. When thou seest part of the signs past, mm -hmm. which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So when it says the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, it's about sending his angels. Sending his angels. Now watch this. Go ahead. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes, and uproars of the people so, in the world. So let's look at earthquakes. Are we seeing earthquakes in the world today? Let's go to this first video clip. You might call it rattling off because the first week we've had multiple tremors on the east coast of America. We also had the deadly earthquake in Japan. Recovery is still underway there. If you hadn't heard about it, first up, it was a small quake that happened in Astoria, Queens, that shook residents yesterday morning, 1.7 on the magnitude scale. The shaking, it jolted residents awake on Roosevelt Island and into the upper east side of Manhattan right about 5.45 a.m. Notice all the first responders coming out because the rattle is thought to have caused a series of small explosions that actually knocked out power in Queens. So residents say they actually felt the vibration like it was happening right below their feet. That was wild. Yeah, that is a, a that is a wild. It was more shallow from, from what it looks like and, and where it was based on, on the depth. But this hasn't happened in a couple of decades this no. strong. Yeah, it's been uh, more than two decades. They say there was a slightly weaker one mm -hmm. that happened in Maryland. This was a 2.3. Oh, it's slightly stronger, actually. 2.3. A little bit the other stronger one was one. on Tuesday. This yeah, one. And, and they say that this was the same energy release, basically, as a bolt of lightning. The epicenter was Rockville, Maryland, and it sh shook the communities there. You know, they have a place that was just after midnight, so it did wake some people up because people can report what they feel. The USGS has this website that you can go and, and you can say, do you feel that? You go right. in and you give the little report. Yeah, they had they had about a thousand reports oh, that, wow. that came from, from this one. Yeah, it was Montgomery County, no damage or anything, but not super uncommon. I was I was interested so close to DC, Baltimore, that, that region. Mm -hmm. There have been reports dating back to the late 1800s that these shakings occur. In fact, there was one, it was a magnitude 5.8. It struck Central Virginia back in 2011. Structures were damaged with one that's a magnitude 5.8, but one much weaker than that. Yeah, yeah and you look at this, uh, earthquakes can happen anytime. Over the last 10 days, these are all earthquakes that have happened. Magnitude four or, or less, 4.1 or less, uh, sorry, 4.1 mm -hmm. or stronger. What am I saying? 4.1 mm -hmm. or stronger. The scale goes up, not down. 4.1 or stronger. And there's more than 300 of the last 10 days. And look how it's coast to coast, these different shakes happen. Sometimes the depth, though, of mm -hmm. the quake prevents you from actually feeling it. And you and you do have active faults, and, and then you have ones that, that aren't as active or are much older. Take, for example, the one that occurred in, in Queens. But out on the West Coast, as we, as we call it, that ring of fire, there are earthquakes that happen frequently. South of St. Louis in the boot heel of Missouri, you have the New Madrid Fault. That's one that folks there living locally have you are, ever been are familiar one? with. Lived in I've lived there. We had the earthquake drills growing up. Yeah. But, and then through the southern plains, it's, it's more about frack, fracking. That, that's actually caused a flurry of, of earthquakes, notably in, in Oklahoma. But the New Madrid one is, is one that people in the plains talk about. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more so, great... All right, thank you. So, read that again, verse 3. Yes, sir. Second Edges chapter 9, verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world... Let's check the next video. Uproars of the people in the world. 2024 begins with wars burning in Gaza, Sudan, Ukraine, and elsewhere. Peacemaking is in crisis. Here are crisis groups, 10 conflicts to watch. The Hamas-led attack on 7 October and Israel's subsequent devastation of Gaza have opened a ghastly new chapter in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. The human cost already appalling continues to climb. It could get worse. It's not a stretch to imagine mass displacement of Palestinians into Egypt. Finding a way out starts with recognizing that attempting to finish off Hamas, Israel's stated war aim, we leave Gaza uninhabitable. A ceasefire is imperative. The war in Gaza also threatens to spark a regional conflagration, 
as tensions escalate between the US and Israel on one side and Iran and its allies on the other. Flashpoints include the Lebanese-Israeli border and the Red Sea, where Yemen's Houthi rebels have been attacking cargo ships. Neither side wants such a confrontation, but there are plenty of ways the Gaza war could set one off. The all-out war between Sudan's army and the paramilitary rapid support forces has left thousands of people dead and displaced some 7 million more. The expecture of genocide again haunts the western region of Darfur. Diplomacy to date has been lackluster. Much more urgent efforts are needed to prevent Sudan's collapse, which would have repercussions throughout the region. Russia's war in Ukraine grinds on. Kiev's counteroffensive has stalled, and the 600-mile front is barely moving. Meanwhile, Western support for Kiev may be wavering. The stakes are high. What happens on the battlefield, and potentially also in Western capitals, will define the future of European security. A rebel offensive in Myanmar's northeast is posing the biggest challenge yet to the junta that grabbed power in 2021. But the various ethnic armed groups and post-coup resistant forces seem unlikely to coalesce. For now, the military seems likely to hang on at a steadily mounting cost to the country. Ethiopia began 2023, having ended the bloody Tigray conflict, but its initially positive outlook did not last long. Federal forces face insurgencies in the Amhara and Oromo regions, while strained relations with neighboring Eritrea add to the tensions. In July, officers in Niger mounted a coup, cementing military rule across the Sahel, following similar takeovers in Mali and Burkina Faso. So far, the juntas have some popular backing due partly to their anti-Western rhetoric, but they have yet to make headway in fighting jihadists or solving the region's other problems. A Kenyan-led mission is due to deploy to Haiti soon to help bring hyper-violent gangs to heal and pave the way for elections. The gangs have wrought havoc. Tens of thousands of Haitians are displaced and nearly half the population is in need of life-saving aid. But politics may get in the way of peace. The unpopular acting prime minister, who has resisted forming a cross-party coalition, might seek to use the mission to consolidate his own power. Azerbaijan's rapid offensive in Nagorno-Karabakh last September ended the enclave's de facto self-rule and displaced over 100,000 ethnic Armenians. Talks between Azerbaijan and Armenia have shown promise, but challenges persist regarding border demarcation and a land corridor to the Azerbaijani enclave of Nakhchivan. If negotiations stall, Baku may resort to pressure tactics, potentially even including border incursions. The November meeting between President Joe Biden and Chinese Premier Xi Jinping was a welcome step towards lowering the temperature between the two big powers. But their fundamental rivalry persists, with hawks on both sides speaking of zero-sum competition in the Asia-Pacific. Taiwan remains one source of volatility. Another is the increasingly frequent encounters between Chinese and US planes and ships in the South China Sea. These are crisis groups, 10 conflicts to watch for the year ahead. So do we see uproars of the people? Yes, That's why I ain't got time for people that don't believe the Bible. Bible speaks and we're seeing it in real time, what's going on. If you ain't got your head on uh, Atlanta Housewives, you know what's going on. Read it again. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 3. Therefore, when, they, when they, there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Read then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that, there, that were before thee, even from the beginning. Read. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. And everyone that shall be saved... Listen good to the... And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. Get the precept in Revelation 14, 12. When people say, what is the works? Revelation 14, 12 tells you what the works is. Faith and works. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Y'all see that? Everybody understand that? Sure. Let's go on back. Second Edith chapter 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land 
and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Now, what does that mean? Give me 2 Thessalonians 2.13 as a precept to go along with this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Yes, sir. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. So notice, he has chosen us from the beginning. Talking about Genesis, go ahead. To salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Mm -hmm. Now so give me 2 Ezra uh, 9.18. 2nd Edges, chapter 9, verse 18. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. So in the beginning, before the earth was made, no man spake against me. Go ahead. For then everyone obeyed. We was all there with them in the beginning. For then everyone obeyed. Go ahead. But now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted. By a perpetual seed mm -hmm. and by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. Back to verse 8 now. Second Edges 9, verse 8. Shall be preserved from the said peril. So if we have faith in works, faith in Christ, works keeping the commandments, we shall be preserved from the said perils. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation in my land. And shall see the Lord's salvation in his land. That's Israel. Go ahead. And within my borders. And within his borders. Go ahead. For I have sanctified them for me. From the beginning. He sanctified us. He chose us from the beginning of the world. Go ahead. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now that right there, right, right there, that right there. Read it again. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. I want to pause and deal with then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Meaning they got the Bible. They got the word of the Lord. But they're not obeying what it says. They're doing their own thing. Right. Let's open up with uh, Oklahoma, Michael Todd. This is an example of abusing God's ways. Y'all know this filth. That's Pastor Michael Todd. I can't hear nothing. But you hit. <laughs> and this is where most people would not face Jesus anymore. What is what this most people do would Jesus? do? This is a is sick turn Negro. away. What, what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is just as he's physically standing here, knowing this what's coming. This is some coming. sodomy stuff. This is some homo stuff. God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty? I'm going to say it in a point just like that. Receiving vision from God might get nasty. Receiving vision from God might get nasty. You mean, you see this? What God, kind of I just bought in crazy faith. I just bought my dream car. My dream car. And what? now you're going to ask me to sell it back? The hell is this? And ride What's in the hoop again? This on? None. Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, Ugh. it might get nasty. These are your Christian pastors. These are your Christian pastors abusing God's ways. That's what I'm talking That's what the Bible's talking about. Oh, the party ain't over. The party ain't over. Give me the next video, Pastor Noel Jones. This is, uh, not Atlanta Housewives, this is uh, pastors of L.A., oh, yeah, yeah. they were on Arsenio Hall show. He, they came, he came back for a quick 
about. And the pastors of L.A. are about five or six most famous pastors. So now listen to, this is explaining. Yeah. This is going to help us further explain, have abused my ways. Meaning they got the Bible, but they're not obeying. Play. Have a preach off. <coughs> Each pastor gets 30 seconds to do a sermon. The title this evening a preach is off. Life is not a reality show. You, sir. Well, I heard a preacher one time say in a movie that if God can deliver Gilligan off the island, he can actually deliver you from anything. Just what God's done in my life, he can do in your life. If Jesus can save a guy like me, redeem me, empower me, set me free from my past, and empower me for my future, God can hook you up too. There is life after mistakes. You can look to Jesus. He will change your life. He left you a couple seconds. Life is not like a reality show. You will not get rated at the end of every week. What is important is that at the end of your run, the executive producer of life gives you a well done. And I want you to understand that even if you were not able to keep up with a Kardashian, it really doesn't matter. What matters is you receive abundant life, and at the end of it, Jesus tells you, well done. This is what life is yeah, all no about. No scripture, just and one this is abusing his ways, understand. abusing the Lord's ways. Keep playing. What are y'all doing? Don't put that back. Keep what? Bro, come on, y'all. I'm here with uh, Life gives you a well done. And I want you to understand that even if you were not able to keep up with a Kardashian, it really doesn't matter. What matters is you receive abundant life, and at the end of it, Jesus tells you, well done. This is what life is all about. And one other thing I want you to understand, no matter what mistakes you make, he will never cancel you. He will always reach out to you, lift you up, and embrace you. Hey, hey black women love this. They love this thing. And, and effeminate black men. This is Noel Jones here. Real issues of life. Old West Indian, old Jamaican. You can argue from two standpoints. The first standpoint <laughs> is that when you understand life, you realize that you will never ever sit in front of 1.2 or 1.5 million people at any one time to decide who you are. The second thing to realize is that whenever you know God and it's you nothing understand to do with the, Bible the things at all. of God, I'm falling you asleep. understand that he and he alone but is Christian the one black who keeps you But Christian black women love this stuff. And all of us have They're to having a preach off. Faith. Preach off, and niggas. We approach him seeking grace. We seek grace because read about none a preach of us at any time can argue with God that I don't need your grace. I am living so well that I no longer need <laughs> Dietrich Hatton. Gospel singer, I want to flip Hattie. it on you. Life is a reality, but it's not a show. See, the things that you're going through are real. The tests and trials and tribulations that you're facing are real. But you have to face reality with maturity. You kind of look like a And understand Alicia, that the God that you serve will Just bring you out of bit. any storm, Just a little bit. any test, any trial. I don't care what you're going through. Let me encourage somebody. Hold on. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and above all that you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in Play the video. Baby, you got power. So stand strong and know that God is going to bring you All right, so let's go. Now, we saw Pastor Noah. I didn't feel there's five of them. This is pastors of L.A. This is a, more examples of how these pastors are abusing God's ways. Back to Hosea 9 and 7, I said, the, no, no, we, 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 remember we read it, it said the spiritual man is mad, mad yeah. the prophet is a fool. Right. Here's another one. This is Pastor Noel Jones' wife. Hey, hey Alicia, we're going to start at one minute and go to 344. Oh. Go to, start at one minute. This is in church now. This is in church. Go ahead, play from there. Images may be upsetting to some. Oh, with the black? Oh, my God. 
Excuse me. In the video, you can see that a group of men had Regina Adams pinned to the ground before she began to scream for someone to get her purse. Excuse me. Also, if you look closely, you can see that Loretta Jones was taken out of the sanctuary. It is alleged that she was knocked unconscious. Some people have wondered why there was no security at the church, especially given the size and prominence of City of Refuge, and Bishop Noel Jones and First Lady Loretta Jones. However, video show that before the incident, there were men guarding the pulpit. However, the incident took place at the end of service, after Bishop Noel Jones's altar call. Maybe, everyone's guard was down because during the invitation, people are expected to walk down the aisle and give their life to Christ. Here is the scene before the incident. Angels are rejoicing, church. Get happy for those people who are coming. For those people who are coming. Why do you all talk like that? Oh, come, let us adore. Obviously, First Lady Loretta Jones had no idea what see, was about to happen. She couldn't see her coming with that big hat on. She That's seemed to be enjoying herself during service. The motivation for why Regina Adams attacked First Lady Loretta she Jones is somewhat unclear. As she was being carried off the premises, she seemed to shout that First Lady Loretta Three Jones chin. was somehow responsible for her daughter getting cancer. She gave my daughter cancer for stopping her for over years. That's why I did that. So that big wildebeest jumped up on the stage and knocked the pastor's wife out. Boom! That was it? All right, so let me give you another example of abusing God's ways. Give me a power bottom. Now, I, thought, I asked the brother, I said, what is this sermon about? He told me the sermon is about Jonah, I mean the whale swallowing Jonah. But when you listen to what's, what? Hey. Go ahead and play the clip. But they know it don't well, sound right. Well, you got to hear the very beginning. Wait, hey, no one can hear the beginning. Go back. Listen, listen. Come out the closet and stop keeping a secret. Stop, go back. Nobody heard that again. Go back. Go ahead. Come out the closet and stop keeping a secret and let the world know I would have been I would have been, I would have been, I would have been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything was... He starts saying, come out the closet. So I'm like, come out the closet? He know this he ain't doing got nothing to do with the damn well. He no. know what he doing. This, this devil shit. know what he doing. He confessed. What he's doing is he confessed. He said, come out the closet. Wow. So that's more examples of abusing God's ways. Here's another one. Hey, hey, there's a song on this. I don't know if we're going to get a stripe. Just play like a few seconds of it. Pastor William Murphy, Atlanta. ATF. I'm this is church. church. Walk it out. That's all I want. That's it. That was yeah, so-called New Year's Eve. So now, Kat, go back to 2nd Ezra. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. They have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. Now, we ain't done yet. Give me 2 Thessalonians 2.10. We're coming back here, Kat. We're coming right back here. Yes, sir. 2 Thessalonians 2.10. Book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. And with all deceivableness of sin. Right? In them that perish. In them that perish. Talking about our people. Right? Because they have, because they receive not the love of the truth. Because our people receive not the love of the truth, which is what? 
Faith in Christ and keeping the commandments. Go ahead. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. Watch this. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Here it come. That, that they all might be damned. What's that word? Damned. That they all might be damned. Damned. That's the same thing Christ said in Matthew 23, 33. Go ahead. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Right, show them pictures, show them clips. This is them right there, them pictures. Okay. Now, let's go back to 2nd Ezra. Go back to 2nd Ezra. Yes, sir. Second Chapter it. 9. Now, where was you at? I was at, we finished verse 9. We're going to 10 now. No, read 9 again. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Not yet. Put that down. We don't want this one yet. I'll tell you when. Go ahead. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now stop. Damnation in this verse, what's the word there in that verse for damnation? Torments. Torments. Read verse 10. Verse 10. For such as in Now y'all can put those other pictures up. Go ahead. For such as in their life have received benefits... And have not known me. Now, the benefits, as you can see on the screen, is money. That's the benefits that they have received. Okay? Money, 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 money. Ten richest pastors in Africa. Give me the next one. Preachers of L.A. Next one. Now, going back, go back to 2nd Ezra 9. Yes, sir. And 10 again. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Notice it. What comes with benefits? Not knowing the Lord. Right. These pastors that have received benefits, they, it says, and have not known me. Do y'all see that? Yes, sir. Verse 11. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law. See that right there? That's it. And they that have loathed means hates. And they that have loathed my, what's the word, brothers? Law. Law. Go ahead. While they had yet liberty. While they had yet liberty. What do y'all think the uh, church blitz is all about? They have liberty to repent. Right. Our job is to sit down with them and try to win them over. Yep. Read that in. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance and was, when as yet place of repentance, go ahead, was open unto them. That's when the brothers go in front of the churches. That's when the brothers hand out flyers to them. That's the place of repentance. Go ahead. Understood not. Understood not. But despised it. Y'all see that? But despised it. Hated it. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. That verse right there. Do y'all see that verse 12? Read it again. The same must know it after death by pain. Read the bottom of verse 9. Bottom of verse 9. And, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now verse 12. The same must know it after death. By pain. So the torments is the pain after death. I know what you think. But you just read in Job that everybody's at peace. Right, right. Everybody is at peace when they die. So then what is, the, what is the torment? What is the pain after death? I'm going to show you. Just hold on. But I want you to just put a highlight in your, in, your, in your Bible or in your notebook. Okay? Keys of hell and death. Watch this. Revelation 1.18. Watch this. Pay close attention. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Now, this is Christ speaking. I am he that liveth and was what? And was dead. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I am alive forevermore. Here Amen. Come. And have the keys of hell and death. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Christ says he has the keys of hell and death. So, wait a minute. Hell in the context of the grave, that's the sentence for all flesh, right? Yes, sir. So we ain't talking about that. Everybody dies. Sorrow, trouble, oppression, slavery, that's been going on from the beginning. So that's not talking about that either. Read again. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. This hell, this death, is that damnation 
we read about in Matthew 23. 23. Was that a car crash? <laughs> that death in hell here is the torment. That death in hell here is the, they shall know it after death by, what's that word it used? Pain. Pain. That's what this is talking about here. Now, go right back to Matthew 23, 33. One more time. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The damnation of hell. So Christ is not talking about the grave. That's a sentence for all flesh. He's not talking about sorrow, uh, captivity, or trouble in the flesh. He ain't talking about that. This is that torment he's talking about that many of our people don't believe in. Watch this, Matthew 10, 27. Yes, sir. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, mm -hmm. that speak ye in light. So what I tell you in darkness, meaning what I told you in private, mm -hmm. I want you to speak it openly before all the people. Go ahead. And what ye hear in the ear. And what I've told you in your ear privately. That preach upon the housetops. I, I want you then to go on the housetops and preach it loud for everybody. Go ahead. And fear not them which kill the body. Wait, wait, wait. He's saying that because what we preach in public will get us killed. What, we're, what he told us privately, right, right. what he told us in parables, he wants us to make it plain to the people. But in the same token, he says, now, what you're going to say out there is going to get you killed. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. You see that part right there? But are not able to kill the soul. Watch this. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In where? In hell. In where? In hell. That's the damnation. Man can only kill the flesh, this body. Once this is going, your soul is still alive. You are, the real you is alive. But Christ said, if you disobey, fear the Lord that can kill your body, not just your body, but your soul too. In hell. That's damnation. Now, what verse was that, Cap? That was verse 28 of Matthew 10. Read on. Verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Mm -hmm. A one of them shall not, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. So now he says a bird does not die without the father's consent. Go ahead. He's but, talking about us. Go ahead. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He's saying that's how important you are, you Israelites. Every hair on our head is numbered. Go ahead. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're more important than birds, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Confess me before men. What does he mean? Verse 28 again. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. That's in fear of death. Go ahead. Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. If you ain't afraid, he said, I'm going to confess you before the heavenly Father. Go ahead. But whosoever shall deny me before men. Because you're scared to die in this flesh. You don't want your body to be burned. You don't want your head to be cut off. You don't want to be stabbed. You don't, be, you don't want to be dragged behind a car. You don't want to be whiplash. What's the thing with the horse when they tie your arms and your legs and rip you apart? I don't want none of that to happen to me. Christ said what? But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And guess what that is? Damnation. Christ denying you is damnation. Give me that. Uh, watch this. Proverbs 8.36. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 36. But he that sinneth against me. He that sinneth against me. I want all you adulterers out there to listen good. He, and you liars, and go ahead, read it again. But he that, that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. You ain't wronging us. You wronging your own soul. Go ahead. Notice it says, wait, read it again, read it again. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Stop. He didn't say wrong your own body. He said you wrong your soul. Watch the next part. All they that hate me love death. So what kind of death you think that's talking about? It ain't talking about the death of your body because he's talking about your soul. 
This is that torment. This is that damnation he's talking about. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, from there, Acts 3.22. Book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. So Moses prophesied about the coming Christ. So now they're quoting it. Go ahead. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. Whatever Christ says, Moses told us way back in Deuteronomy 18, you better obey him. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that every soul. Every what was that word? That every soul. Every soul. Go ahead. Which will not hear that prophet. You reject the teachings of Christ. I don't want to hear what he said. Shall be destroyed from among the people. Y'all see that? Shall be destroyed from among the people. That ain't no regular death. Because we already read at the beginning of class. Death is a sentence on all flesh. Everybody physically dies. He's talking about a deeper death. Exactly. Give me a second. Go back to 2nd Ezra uh, 9 again. Yes, I want you to remember what we read in 2nd Ezra 9, 3 to 12. I want you to read it again quickly. Verse 3. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. So when we see these things, which is happening, we ain't got time to, Captain, we ain't got time to play with these brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. They want to suck and, um, I'm sorry, excuse me. They want to. They want to be swallowed up and all that. We ain't got time for these people. Read it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Therefore, when they want zuzus and wham whams. They want to comb a nigga's chest hairs. <laughs> the hell is this? Y'all keep playing with these spirits. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Therefore, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that, that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works mm -hmm. and endings and effects and signs. We're seeing the effects and signs of what was prophesied, go ahead. And everyone that shall be saved. This is what we want. We all want verse 7 and 8, go ahead. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his work. We want to be able to escape by keeping the commandments. Go ahead. And by faith. And by faith in Christ. Go ahead. Whereby ye have believed. Uh -huh. Shall ye shall be preserved from the said perils. From the destruction to come. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. Mm -hmm. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. We want to see the resurrection of Jerusalem. The resurrection of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh -huh. We want to see that thing. Go ahead. Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways. So like we looked at some of them preachers, they abused the ways of the Lord, go ahead. And they, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Uh-oh, it says them guys gonna dwell in torments. That's the damnation, go ahead. For such as, in, as is in their life have received benefits. They got money, they got clout, they got fame and fortune. And women, go ahead. And have not known me. They have not known the Lord, though. Go ahead. And they that have loathed my law. And you that have hated God's law. While they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Mm -hmm. The same must know it after death by pain. The same must know it after death by pain, by damnation. Nobody want to talk about that right there. Now, I'm going to show you a parable that Christ gave us. Luke 16. Luke 16. Y'all got those images lined up for me? Luke 16 and verse, let's open up with verse 19. Yes, sir. The book of Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, fine linen, and fared, fared sumptuously every day. So and this rich man... There's more than just one picture I sent y'all for the rich man. The rich man who fared sumptuously are those ministers, those politicians, those Israelites who have received benefits. They got money, fame, and fortune. Everybody loves them. This rich man does not represent Rome. It does not represent the white man. This rich man represents, remember what we read earlier? It said the rulers of, of our people have made a covenant with death and hell. Yep. They made an agreement with Rome. 
Just like today, our, these ministers have made an agreement with the United States of America. Keep these people in sin. Keep these people in lies. As long as we get paid, we good. Read it again, verse 19. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. Here it come. And there was a certain beggar. And notice this. And there was a certain beggar. Go ahead. Named Lazarus. Named Lazarus. Which was laid at his gate full of sores. He was laid at his gate full of sores. Lazarus represents the Israelites, the repentant Israelites. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So now, our people, we want the crumbs that the leaders of our society have. We get the crumbs. We want the crumbs. That's the welfare and all of that. That's the, uh, the, the low-paying jobs. When they're in Congress, for example, fighting for jobs. The jobs we're getting are not jobs to be CEOs. No, no, no. We get jobs to be workers. That's the kind of jobs we get. Okay, the ministers, they're going, I'm going to go to Congress and fight for you. And you get a job. You get a job. Dennis, read that again. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fall from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now the dogs. The dogs. We're going to talk about the dogs for a second. Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus 11 and 7. The book of Exodus chapter 11 and verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So God is calling the Hamites, dogs. The Lord is calling Hamites, talking about the other nations. Matthew 15, 25. The book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 25. Then, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Remember, this is the Greek woman. Go ahead. Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. To who? To dogs. So now Christ is calling the Greek woman, the Sarah Phoenician, dogs. Is there an S on that? Uh, dogs, yes. Dogs, yes, yes, meaning yes. Her, not just her. Her, her daughter, and her whole her people. Dogs. So the reference to dogs is the other nations, but guess what? It's also talking about our people, too, in Isaiah 56. Get that one. Yes, sir. Because our people also tend to take advantage of one another. I'll give you an example. Now, I don't know if it's true or not. So I'll say allegedly. It's allegedly. In Atlanta, they, you had a brother named Jay Morrison. And he did this whole campaign about send money, and they was going to open up uh, the Black House. All of a sudden, go ahead, just speak on it. One, two. It was 11. He got a fund, a Tulsa fund, if you remember. It was yes. Like kind of rebuilding Black Wall Street. Damn. He, they, um, he appeased it to the people, and they had a convention, and they raised $11 million. Last year, well, around, yeah, last year now. Last year, the fund only had about $700,000 in it. And that's what happens. So read Isaiah 56 and 10. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. His watchmen. So there's a lot of watchmen, including these low, these preachers, these, what do you call it? These preachers that's in the hood. They had no, no education or nothing. But they, I saw, gee, they mimic what they see the rich, rich preachers do. Right. They're the unlearned preachers. Thank you. And they open up little churches. Read that again. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. Mm -hmm. They are all dumb dogs. All dumb dogs. They cannot. Notice he calls them dog, calling them dogs. Good. Hey, hey. They cannot hey. bark. Hey. Sleeping. You want you. You know what you're going to see this year? I'm going to show you how this pastor is a bunch of dumb dogs. Pay attention. This is what you're going to see. All this pastor is going to do what? They're going to invite Republican and Democrat, so black dumb people can vote for them. Yeah. Yes, sir. They do that every four years. Yep. Watch. That's what they're going to do. Remember earlier, Bishop said they make a deal, a covenant with America. 
As long as they get paid, they don't give a damn about the people, but yeah, keep yeah. the people in sin, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. They're going to invite Joe Biden, you're going to see Donald Trump, you're going to see all these politicians, senator, congressmen, and in, come inside the church, convince dumb black people to vote for them. And then when they get office, they don't do nothing for black people. Exactly. Exactly. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping. Lying down. When it says they can't bark, meaning they can't prophesy. They can't teach the word of God. Go ahead. Loving to slumber. Mm -hmm. Yea, they are greedy dogs. See that? They're greedy dogs. Mm -hmm. which, which can never have enough. They always want. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Is that it? No, sir. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They are they, shepherds that cannot understand the word of God. That's are, what we read in 2 Ezra 9. It says, and yet have not known me. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. They all look to their own way. They look to their own way. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for his gain, his financial gain. From his quarter. Uh-huh, from his quarter, his church. Okay. Let's go on back. Yes, sir. Luke 16 and read 21 again. Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So now we know the dogs are A, other nations, B, these low-level preachers out here. They open up churches or, and or businesses, talking about like the Chinese, the Italians, and they open up in poor communities and take, 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 so that they can build their communities. But meanwhile, we stay impoverished. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Read. Verse 22, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Ah, uh, and it came to pass that the beggar died. Go ahead. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And was carried by the angels in, and I gave you more than one death. I gave, yep, that's death right there. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Give me Genesis uh, 17, 6 to 8. It's carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Verse 6 through 8, Bishop? Uh, 17, 6 through 8. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 17, verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Start at 5, start at 5. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee. Thy seed after thee. It's talking about Israel. Go ahead. In their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And to thy seed after thee. So that covenant that was made with Abraham, that's his bosom. We're going to inherit all the blessings that was given to Abraham. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Let's go back. You didn't want verse 8, Bishop? Okay, oh yeah, I'm sorry, read verse 8. Verse 8, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So that's going to be the area of New Jerusalem. In fact, Jerusalem is going to be larger than that. Okay, so go back to Luke. Yes, sir. Verse 22 again, Bishop. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. Now notice, okay, uh, IT, y'all are not showing me all the images of the, of the poor man with Abraham. Yes. Give me one more. Yep. Remember, it's talking about Abraham and Lazarus. Okay. Read. The rich man also died. Now, as Christ says, the rich man also died. The one that was in purple and fed sumptuously every day, he died. Go ahead. And was buried. Then it says, and he was buried. So this rich man, this which represents our people that have benefits in this world, dying. Okay, now they're, they're in the grave. Okay, read. Verse 23, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Now wait, wait, we want to pause right there. Read it again. And in hell he lift up his eyes. Being in torment. I want y'all to see that that hell is the torments. It's the same torments we read in 2nd Ezra 9. It's the same thing Christ said in Matthew 23, 33 about damnation. Read again verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and, see, and seeth Abraham afar off, 
and Lazarus in his bosom. Mm -hmm. And he cried and said, Father Abraham. Wait, 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 wait. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he might dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I am tormented what? In this flame. In this flame. This is what Christ said, fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. Okay. Now, it ain't talking about like the church say in the middle of the earth. This is another realm, another dimension. That's what it's going into. And I'm going to show you that too. Read again. I'm sorry. And, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. For I am tormented in this flame. Mm. Go ahead. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing. Oh, wait a minute. What was the word we read in 2nd Ezra 9? Benefits. Benefits. Read that again. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. Mm -hmm. But now he is comforted. Now he is comforted in the bosom of Abraham, the kingdom. Because that's what it's talking about. And thou art tormented. And thou art tormented. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Go right back to 2nd Ezra 9, please. Yes, sir. And read 9 and 10 again. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Y'all see that? So it's not saying anything different. It's saying the same thing. Read down to 12. Read down. Yes, sir. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. Mm -hmm. The same must know it after death. By pain. By what? By pain. Pain. So now Christ is saying, you're in torment now. Yeah. You're, now it's your turn to be tormented. You thought you got away right. with that good life. Right. But now you're tormented. I know what you're thinking. But I thought you read in Job, we all at peace. Remember, Christ said he has the keys of hell and death. I'm going to get to that in a moment. Now go back to Luke. Yes, sir. What verse we was at in Luke? We, we, uh, we finished verse 25. We finished verse 25. 26, yes, sir. All right. Read 26. Luke chapter 16, verse 26. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. That's how you know it's another realm, another dimension. We couldn't go to them. They can't come to us. But we could see. It said Abraham and Lazarus could see the rich man in torments. But they could not reach one another. Read it again. Read 25 and 26 together. Yes, sir. Luke 16, 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. This great gulf is another dimension, another realm. Go ahead. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Mm, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me a, hold that, hold that. Give me Isaiah 66. Yes, sir. And I want the last verse. Read 23, 24. And we're going to come back here. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 20, verse 23. And it shall come to pass. Let's talk about the kingdom now. That from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So we know the kingdom is set up at this time. Watch this. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses. Here come, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. You broke the commandments. You rejected Christ. For their worms shall not die. We, oh, oh, oh. When it says their worms are of their soul. Mm. Where their soul shall not die. Go ahead. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Now we're going to touch on that a little more later on in the class. Let's go back to Luke. Yes, sir. So that's in the kingdom. So you know that when the kingdom is established, that's why Christ said he has the keys to death and hell. 
It's going, I'm going to show you when he returned, what he going to do. Watch. Where we at, Cap? Luke, we're in Luke chapter 16, verse 27 now. Uh -huh. Then he said, I pray thee therefore. Hey, can y'all put your images up? They don't need to see me. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. He said, I got five brethren. Go ahead. That he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. I want you to look at the five bro the brothers. They living good. They live in lavish. They got women. They got fortune. They got wealth. They got it all. Okay. So read that again, Cap. One more yes, again, sir. one more again. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. That's how you know this rich man ain't Esau. Right. It says they have Moses and the prophets. That's about Israel. Mm -hmm. The Israelites got Moses and the prophets. Give me that. Watch this. Watch this. Give me John 5 of 46. We're coming back here, Cap. John chapter 5, verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? That's right. Go back. Luke chapter 16, verse 29. Yeah, put those images up. Come on. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. They have Moses and the prophets. Go ahead. Let them hear them. Let them hear. Let them study their scriptures. Go ahead. And he said, nay, Father Abraham. And he said, but, no, Father Abraham. Go ahead. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. They, uh oh, they will repent. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. Give me John 12 and 9. He said, if one comes from the dead, they will repent. John 12, 9 and 10. John chapter 12, verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also. Christ had just raised Lazarus from the dead. Go ahead. Whom he raised from the dead. Whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Do y'all see that? You see how these wicked niggas are? These dudes are wicked as hell. So when we go back to Luke 16 and 30 again. Luke chapter 16, verse 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. That's a lie. That's a lie. They never would repent. Go ahead. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Watch this. Give me John 5, 46. John 5, 46. John chapter 5 and verse 46. For, he, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me. Mm -hmm. For he wrote of me. Right. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Now let's go to Matthew 28 when Christ resurrected. Matthew chapter 28. Where well, you want to start, Bishop? Verse 1. Uh, let's start at verse 11. Verse 11. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 28, verse 11. Now remember, Christ had just resurrected. Go ahead. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. They said the stone was moved away and Christ was gone. The body was gone. Go ahead. And, and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole away. While he and stole him away while we were asleep. You see that? So they created, they concocted a lie. Because when you read it, it said the angels came down, the guards got a fright and fled, the angels moved the stone away, and Christ came out. But the elders and them said, No, 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 say this. Here's some money, you're gonna say this lie. Yep. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 12. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure him. You know what that does also? That puts more of a bounty on the apostles' heads. That's like you breaking, you broke, and you broke the seal, you broke a uh, pilot's seal, and you went in there and, and stole a body? So now I said, listen, we got to arrest these guys. Go ahead. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying in common, in commonly reported, is, commonly. is commonly reported 
among the Jews until this day. Now let's go on back to Luke 16, 30 and 31. One more again. Luke chapter 16, verse 30. And, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be, be pre, excuse me, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. They won't be persuaded if one rose from the dead. Y'all see that? Matthew 28. We read that, right? Matthew yes, 29. Right. Now give me Mark 9. Watch this. I need y'all to pay close attention to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9. Now, I'm going through this because you got Israelites that teach you can be an adulterer, a thief, a liar, even a homo. And when you die, you get the kingdom of heaven. Any of you men and women that believe that garbage. Mm. Mark chapter 9, verse 40. Let's start at 42. Yes, sir. The book of Mark chapter 9, verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones. That the little ones that believe are you men and women in the, who have the faith of Christ and keep the commandments. Let me say it again. The little ones that believe are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith in Jesus. Like it says in Revelation 14, 12. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. Everybody wrote that down? Only five people wrote it down back there. Go ahead. Mark chapter 9, verse 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Christ said, if you sin against these little ones, it's better that you kill yourself. That's what the Son of God said. Just go kill yourself. Come on. Verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Mm. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell. To, wait, wait, to go where? To go into hell. Go ahead. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Do you see that? Into the fire that shall never be quenched. Go ahead. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the same thing we read in Isaiah 60. Go back to Isaiah 66. It's the same thing. He used it to fire in your worm. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of, of the men that have transgressed against me. For you break their the worms, commandments, you break the commandments, you don't have faith in Christ. For their worms shall not die. See that? Where their worms shall not die, that's your soul. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Neither shall their fire be quenched. Let's go back to Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Verse 44. Verse 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. It's saying the same thing. Now, hold this, hold this, for worm. Job 25 and 6, for worm. Job 25 and 6, verse 6? Yes. Job chapter 25 and verse 6. How much less man that is, what, that is a worm and the son of man which is a worm. Y'all see this? So it's talking about us mm. being a worm. Really, it's going into our soul. Okay, let's go back to Mark. Now, Mark chapter 9 is a very heavy, heavy book. Mark chapter 9, read from 42 again. Yes, sir. Mark 9, 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed. Stop. I want to understand what this is talking about. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Give me Deuteronomy 13. Here's the understanding of that. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Mm -hmm. About cutting, it ain't about cut off your, your literal hand. Watch this. Let's start at verse 6. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 13, verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter... Or thy wife, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul. See that? Which is as thine own. You love them so much. You love your brother, the son of your mother. You love your son. You love your daughter. You love your wife. You love your friend, which is as thine own soul. Go ahead. Entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods 
which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Watch this. Thou shalt not consent unto him. Don't listen to him. Nor hearken unto him. Don't hearken unto him. Neither shall thine eye pity him. And don't pity him. Go ahead. Neither shall thou spare. Don't spare him. Neither shall thou conceal and him. And don't try to hide it. Go ahead. But thou shalt surely kill him. Ooh, wait a minute. So under Moses, we literally had to kill our brother, our wife, our son, our daughter, our friend. That was under Moses. Read verse 9 again. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. Now, wait a minute. So let's go back now to Mark chapter 9. So now we know Christ ain't telling us to literally kill nobody. He just saying cut them off. Watch this. Read it again. 42 down. Yes, sir. Mark 9, 42. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe So the offense is, let's go worship other gods. Now, nobody's literally going to say that. But what are they going to do? They're going to try to convince you to go back to Islam, convince you to go back to the Catholic Church or the Baptist Church, or get you into some sin to pull you out from keeping the commandments. That's their goal. That's their objective, whether it's male or female. Go ahead. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged <laughs> about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, Cut it off. Cut it off. That's your wife. That might be your son, your daughter, your best friend, your mama. It might be your daddy. Go ahead. It is better for thee to enter to life main than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. See, nobody won't talk about that. You'd rather stay close, good friends with your buddy, like a sister... One brother we, uh, was put out. Mm -hmm. Simple sister, not sister here, but she going to run out behind the brother because she like him. He go to the gym, he got all muscles and all that. She, uh, she liked, so she left the truth to go with him. Go with him. Yeah, that's what she came for. And months later, they got married. Then maybe a month after that, she sees the cell phone, she picks it up, and she's seeing text messages with another man calling her, calling him, babe, boo, I love you. You so sexy. So now she goes to the husband, hey, are you a homo? He gets so mad, he beats her up. Yeah. Are you a homo? You don't need to ask that. <laughs> but now the sister says, I want to come back. No, sis, ah, pump the brakes. Stay all, your ass you behind out there. You stay out there. You made your choice. He was so sexy. Yeah. Little did you know he wasn't interested in you. Exactly. You stupid black women. I don't understand some of our sisters. Oh, there's more. Another man huh? Power yeah, yeah, he's a power bottle. <laughs> Good. Where we at, Cap? Verse 43 and 45, Bishop. And I knew something was wrong <laughs> when I met him years ago. I said, bro, you go to the gym all the time. You Decent looking, the sisters want you. Oh, I'm not interested. I'm like, oh, I'm not interested. I feel. I, I figured. I said maybe he in the spirit. Where we at, Cap? We um. <laughs> Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> Where we at, Cap? Mark chapter nine, verse forty-five. Oh man, Mark chapter nine, verse forty-five. And if thy foot offend thee, now it talks about your foot. And if your foot offends you, meaning your foot. It might be your buddy, your friend, your mama, who carries you here, carries you there, can, entices you to sin, entices you to break God's law, to go someplace else. Go ahead. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter, halt into life than having two feet to ca be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Go ahead. Where their worm dieth not. Where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire is not, you can't, this is unquenchable fire. Mm. You ain't blowing this fire out. Go ahead. And if thine eye offend thee. And if your eye, that eye might be your wife. Okay. That eye might be your mother. Go ahead. 
and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Than having two eyes, because you want to keep your wife. Right. Some of you men, you simps, you know your wife is a nigga. She a damn devil. But you want to hold on to her. Well, you hold on to her then. And you're going to get this judgment right here that we're reading about. You know the woman is no damn good. Just like the women. They know the man is no damn They just hold I got to have him. He gives good deed. Yep. Read it again. And, and if... And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye. It's better that you enter the kingdom single. You single, you ain't got no spouse. But Then having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Then to be cast into hell fire. Go ahead. Where their worm dieth not. Where their worm dieth not. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire is not quenched. This is unquenchable fire. This is spiritual nuclear fire. Go ahead. God fire. Go ahead. For everyone shall be <coughs> salted with fire. That was it. What verse was that? Verse 49 now. Verse, okay. Give me uh, Matthew 10, 36. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10, 36. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. That's what Deuteronomy 13 and 6 said. Your wife, your mother, your father, your son, your daughter, your friend. Read it again. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Mm -hmm. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. I'm going to leave the truth because I love my mother and father more than the Lord. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter. I love my son more than the Lord. I love my daughter more than the Lord. Go ahead. More than me is not worthy of me. You're not worthy of me. Y'all understand that? So, Meaning what? You're going to get that damn nation. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, and we want verse 22. Matthew chapter... Y'all keep playing. Matthew 5, verse 22. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with this brother without a cause... You ain't got no business being angry with this brother. But you concocted something in your head. You have an evil suspicion. Read it again. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause... He did nothing to you. He broke no law against you shall be in danger of the judgment. Now shall be in danger of the judgment. Go ahead. Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. The council is man's council. Oh, we're going to counsel you. We're going to say, hey, bro, you're going off this, this, that, and the other. You're going wrong. You're wrong. But? But whosoever shall say, thou fool. Because you never repent. You hold on to that anger without a cause. Read that apart again, but whosoever. But whosoever shall say, thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Y'all see that? So I'm not, Christ is not stuttering. No. He's saying it over and over and over, hell fire. And people, Israelites are going, no, 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 that's not, that's not what it means. It does mean that. Stop playing with these dumb, stupid, black Hebrew Israelites. They're going to keep you in your sin. Watch this. 1 John 3, 14. <clears throat> the book of 1 John, chapter 3. And verse 14. This is why a lot, of, a lot of them groups, they hold on to hatred. We hate you, purple faggots. Y'all, you ain't even know us. Right. But there's a spirit of hatred. They going to get that hellfire. Yes, sir. They can't even explain why. They can't even explain. They ain't never met us. But there's such a hate. I hate you niggas. I hate the black, back of your neck. I hate your black gums. The hell is this? Where we at? Uh, 1 John 3, 14, Bishop. Go ahead. We know that we have passed from death unto life. You see that? We have passed from death unto life. The life is, hold that. Give me Romans 6, 23. I'm explaining the death. I'm explaining the life. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Now, hold on. We read earlier that the sentence of death is upon what? All flesh. So that death ain't talking about just your body dying. Read it again. For the wages of sin is death, uh -huh. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see how he explains that life is eternal life. That's eternity. World dominion. World domination. That's what that's talking about. So that means that that death is that torment, that hellfire. Everybody understand that? Sure. That death ain't just no regular death. You had a heart attack and died. No. no. 
It's something with unquenchable fire like we've been reading. Judgment. Judgment. Where you at, Cap? Uh, 1 John 3.14 again, Bishop. Yes, sir. 1 John 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life. So we have passed from death unto life, meaning eternal life. Because when, this, when this body dies, we pass unto eternal life. Go ahead. Because we love the brethren. What? Because we love the brothers. So when you die today, let's say like the sister just passed away. She's in eternal life now. Okay. When the kingdom comes, she's going to be right there. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. That's how that works. Read again. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. That's what we just read in Matthew 5, 22. You got hatred and anger toward your brother. Go ahead. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Go ahead. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. You don't have eternal life. So if you don't have eternal life abiding in you, you got damnation. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. From there, watch this. Give me Revelation 13. I'm going to show y'all something. <clears throat> hey, give me Montezuma. Montezuma. Now, Revelation 13, I want verse 7. This is what the, white, what the prophecy says the white man would do to us. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. It was given unto the white man to make war with the saints. That him is this white man. Started off as Spain and Portugal, Spanish and the Portuguese, followed by France and England and America. But they are all the him there. Read again. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. The saints are the Israelites. Give me that precept in um, Psalms 148.14. I'm going to show you who the saints are. This is for you new brothers and sisters online. Who are the saints? Because right now, Christians watch and talk about anybody that believes in white Jesus. That's a lie. That ain't what it's talking about. Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints. Saints, go ahead. Even of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel are the only saints, read. A people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So the, the saints, according to the Bible, or only the Israelites. That's right. You can't squeeze your way into it as a Baptist, as a Catholic, as a Muslim. No. You must be an Israelite. Let's go back. Yes, sir. Revelation, Revelation 13, 7. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So Spain made war against the saints. Spain and Portugal made war against our people in Peru. That was the tribe of Asha in South America. Okay. Read. And to overcome them. And they over, you see they got the cross, right? And to overcome us. They overcame us. They conquered us. Give me the next one. Yes. Give me the next one. And this is what they also did. Spain did this to us. Portugal put us on slave ships as well. Mm -hmm. France and England put us on slave ships. This is what it means to overcome us. They conquered us. Give me the next one. Yes. They conquered us. They enslaved us. Give me the next one. Okay, give me the next one. They put yokes of iron on our necks. Go ahead. They made us work in their cotton fields, tobacco fields. Stop right there. Come back to me now. Read that again, verse 7. Revelation 13, verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So this white man, this him is the white man, made war with the saints, the Israelites. Go ahead. And to overcome they them. They enslaved us, all 12 tribes. And power was given, on, <coughs> was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Watch verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth. All that dwell upon the earth. Shall worship him. Shall worship him. I want you all to take a good look at that image. Everybody worships the white man as God, mm -hmm. as Jesus, even if you're a Muslim. Right. You know why I say that? Because when you ask a Muslim, who is that white man right there with the crown of thorns? They say Jesus. The son, of, the son of the Lord. Really? They say Jesus was a prophet, but that's him. That's what the Muslims say. They all believe that that fake image is Christ. Reading in verse 8. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, 
whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. And he doeth and great. He, the he is the same. That he is the him in verse 7. The he is the same him in verse 7. It's the white man. Read. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven. Fire from, come down from heaven was during oh. World War II when they destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the atom bomb. The atom bomb was created by the white man uh, Oppenheimer and Einstein. Dumb two demons. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 13. <clears throat> and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. America dropped the atom bomb. Go ahead. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. They're calling that miracles. They're calling that miracles. Fire from heaven is a miracle. That dropping of the atom bomb, God says, the world called that a miracle. Because it had never been seen. It had never been done. Read. <clears throat> Which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. The European nations. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. Hey, hey, give me the image. Uh, hey, go to Wikipedia and type in head of Jesus. Head of Jesus or head of Christ. I think one or the other. I forgot what it's called. That's the image. But I'm going to go to Wikipedia. Head of Christ. Go down. Raise it up. Put it on the screen. <laughs> Raise it up. Let me see. Raise it up. Raise it up. Ah, uh, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to look. Okay. Ro pull it down just a little bit. Pull it down. Pull it down. Down more. Right there. Now, get a lie. Can you see where it says under origins? Yes, sir. Origin. It says in 1940. I want that yes, right sir. there. Uh, in 1940... Wait, actually, read the whole thing. Yes, sir. Origins. The head of Christ originated as a charcoal sketch entitled The Son of Man, done in 1924, and sold to be the cover of the Covenant Companion, the denominational magazine for the Evangelical Covenant Church. Solomon completed several variations of the painting over the years, and the first oil version dates from 1935 for the 15th anniversary celebration. 50th. 50th oh, excuse me. 50th anniversary celebration of the Evangelical Covenant Church. Now, here Church. it comes. Here it comes. This part is what I wanted. Go ahead. In 1940. In was, 1940. What war was this, brothers? World War II. World War II. Read again. In 1940, he was asked to reproduce that painting by the students of North Park Theo Theological Seminary. This reproduction was seen by representatives of the Gospel Trumpet Company, the publishing arm of the Church of God, Anderson, who created a new company called Cribble. Jump down to the next paragraph where it says the Baptist. The Baptist bookstore initially popularized the painting. See that? The Baptist bookstore initially popularized the painting. Wait, can y'all pull it down so we can see the painting? Go ahead. The, Baptist, the Baptist bookstore initially popularized the painting, distributing various sized uh, look, lithographic images for sale throughout the southern United States. The Salvation Army and the YMCA, as members of the USO, handed the uh, out-pocket-sized versions of the painting to several servicemen heading overseas. To during, American servicemen. Uh, to American servicemen heading overseas during World War II. During when? World War II. So this was during World War II. This became popularized. Let's go back to Revelation 13. Yes, sir. And verse 14. 14, yes, sir. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. Hold, and on. This, Hold on, Cap. You know what's so heavy about this? Now I want you to guys to think. They, when he said, they, they handed out to the soldiers, right? That was on their way to World War II, right? Now, keep in mind, it's not only the soldiers. They do that all over the world. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, there is who? There is CIA. There is the Catholic Church. Those nuns, those priests. They use that all over the world. Today, when you go to Brazil, what you saw? That same thing. They do like a big one of it in Brazil. And guess what? Catholic, Catholicism is the heaviest religion all over the world. That's the biggest. Like for example, in Haiti, Catholicism is number one. 
No matter where you go, there's a reason Christianity is number one all over the world. Because of that. That's what Bishop Bring earlier said. They said the whole world worshiping, taking Esau, the white man, is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where you at, Cap? Revelation Re 13? Revelation 13, 14, sir. 14 again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. So this miracle was done in what year, brothers? Right, this is World War what? Two. Go ahead. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. So they reproduced that image and made it popular during World War II. Go ahead. Which had the wound by his sword and did live. Because that image comes from Rome. Rome. Rome is the one that had the wound by his sword. They fell and it came back to life during the Renaissance. That image comes from ancient Rome. Go ahead. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So this white man had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The life they gave him is the life of Christ. They didn't tell us that that was Caesar Borgia. They said, no, that's Jesus the Christ, the son of God. That's what they said. They said, that's Yehoshua. That's Yahshua. Go ahead. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak. It speaks in their movies. Passion of the Christ. Uh, the greatest story ever told. They hire actors that look similar to this image. Okay? Why is there black, black on the screen there? And they make these movies. And everybody, men, effeminate men, and, and dumb, evil black women go there and cry. Especially the Northern Kingdom. Oh, Jesus! Jesus! Oh, it's okay! Oh. You've got to be kidding me. It's witchcraft. Yeah. Hey. Years ago, we used to beat that picture up in camp. Mm -hmm. Hold it up and hit it with a stick. Hit it in the face. So I'm hitting your God. I'm hitting your Jesus. And even be, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> like he's feeling the punches. Bam, bam. And want to fight sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Get violent. We used yeah. in Sierra Leone. De uh, Deacon <laughs> Isaac stepped on it. The black woman started crying. Literally broke down in tears. Talk about my Jesus. You can't make this stuff up. Where we at, Cap? Uh, we just finished verse 15 of Revelation 13, Bishop. Yes, go ahead. Verse 16. And he calls us, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. So the mark. We're going to talk about the mark. Shout out to uh, Captain Matt. Give me Job 10, 14. This is the scripture you go to. It gets straight to the point. What is the mark? The book of Job, chapter 10, and verse 14. If I sin. If I what? If I sin. Uh-huh. Then thou markest Then thou me, markest me, and thou will not acquit me from mine iniquity. So it's telling you what the mark is. What is it, brothers? Sin. Sin. That's it, right to the point. Nice. Now. Give me the uh, video from YouTube, the digital ID. For the European Union reached a final agreement on a law to create the European Digital ID or EID, the EU's first fully digital identification system. Now, this law will provide Europeans with a digital wallet containing digital versions of their ID cards, their driver's licenses, their academic certificates, medical records, bank account information, and so on. The next major step in the EU will be to create a digital EU euro and a central bank digital currency which is currently being developed by the European Central Bank. Now I've been warning about digital ID for some time and it wasn't so long ago that like many of these issues which turned out to be correct it was considered to be nothing but a conspiracy theory. Closer to home the Labor government will soon introduce an Australian version of the digital ID legislation and consultation on that bill has recently closed and you can see how it's going to happen. Then we'll get a digital currency, and once those steps are in place, a digital snare trap will have been created. And we saw how that worked a couple of years ago with the financial cancellation of the Canadian truckers when they were protesting COVID lockdowns and freedoms. The advancement of technology is inevitable, but this push towards a digital ID future is another step towards a Chinese Communist Party-style social credit system, which will force you to support the current thing at the risk of total cancellation. We must reject a digital ID future, and time is running out for people in this place to understand that they are playing with fire. 
Let's go back to Revelation 13 and verse 17. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell. So now he used the term cancellation. He said if you don't support the current thing or the status quo, you will be canceled. And he gave an example of what happened in Canada during the trucker strike, how all their bank accounts were shut down, every last one of them, that went against Canada. Read that again, verse 17. Yes, sir. Revelation 13, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. That's sin. Or the name of the beast. Uh-huh. That's America. Or, or the number of his name. Read. And the next verse gives the number. Go ahead. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. What man? The white man. What man? The white man. Go ahead. And his number is 600. Three score and six. Six, six, six. That represents Esau. That represents America. That represents Edom. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Now, from there, give me Revelation 17. We're still talking about the, I want to jump back to the mark. A longer way that I had earlier for the mark, Revelation 17 and verse 4. Just read verse 4. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman the was... The woman represents America. Esau, America. Go ahead. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. The golden cup in her hand represents like we just read in Revelation 13. Go back to Revelation 13 and verse 16 again. Revelation 13, 16. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark That's in, sin. in their right hand or in their foreheads. So now in Revelation 17 and verse 4 again. Revelation 17 and 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Having a golden cup in her hand. Full of abominations. That's what we wanted. Full of abominations. And filthiness of her fornication. And filthiness of her fornication. Wait, give me one word, brothers. Sin. Now, let's look at some. This is what's in your hand. Okay, you got the Roman Catholic Church, Christianity. Okay, come on. That's in Brazil, same thing. Oh, I forgot this picture right here. Can you, hey, Gap, can you count everybody in the picture? Yes, sir. But so don't count uh, in the middle. Right, from the left, you got one, two, three. Four, five, six. On the right hand side, you got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's supposed to be Christ and the twelve apostles. But zoom in to on Christ's right hand side, his right hand side. Zoom in. All right, so y'all see right there? Do you see the woman? Do y'all see the woman? Yes, so they have one of Christ's uh, uh, twelve apostles, they got a woman there on his right hand. Now move over to his left hand, uh, standing up. Right. Right there, there's another woman standing right there. They got two women in the picture. And nobody in church picks that up. Nobody sees that. Bishop, Jimmy, that, Bishop, that one look like a transgender. Yeah, you're right about that. So you got Caesar Bowl in the middle, tra a trainee on the... On <laughs> right. That ain't nothing but the Borgias family sitting out eating snails. Right, that's it. Give me the next picture. So it, th this is the filthiness, full of abomination and filthiness of a fornication. These are examples. Religion. Go ahead. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, you got Christmas. You got, what, what do y'all, not, a, okay, yeah, Christmas is evil, but what do y'all notice about this picture? Who's missing? The man. The single black woman is pushed to death glamorous. She's the only woman on the earth that glorifies being single with no man. Chinese don't do that. East Indians don't do that. Arabs don't do that. White folks don't do that. Only the dumb black woman glorifies being single with kids. Do y'all see the total disrespect here? She got two kids and there's no... First of all, the picture's evil and wicked as hell. They throw Merry Christmas down there to, to make you go to sleep and you totally forget where's the man at. Exactly. They, they want this to be normal for us. Exactly. That's why we don't catch it. Because no other normal. race does that. Everybody else be like, yo, what the hell are you doing? Where's the man at? 
We, we just take it and say, oh, that's normal. Just put Merry Christmas and we good in exactly. Jesus. Yep, good in Jesus. Good in white Jesus' name. Give me the next picture. Here we go again. The single black woman with stupid Easter. The damn rabbit is. No man in the picture at all. That's glorified. Only amongst black people. Give me the next one. Right there. Now. Y'all might think I'm making this up, but I lie not. This was a gender revealing party in Oklahoma by, listen to what I'm about to say, by officers and their wives. Ha! Zoom in to the top of the cake and let's look and see what's at the top. Do y'all see sperm at the top? It's a gender revealing party, male or female baby. This was Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't know what's wrong with our people. Oh, one of the sisters, I tell you brothers are simps that listen to these stupid women. Here comes the woman. Let's have a gender revealing party right. during our, what they call that? When she sits on the throne. Baby shower. Baby shower. And the stumps, dumb, stupid officers, yeah, good idea. And then when we call you simps and stupid, you mad at us. This is the same thing Eve did to Adam in the garden. Hey, we ain't got to listen to God. Let's do what white man says and let's have a gender revealing baby shower. And several officers and their wives went and celebrated her black behind on a throne. With, I want to know who ate the sperm off the cake. Bishop. I wouldn't eat that thing. I'd be like, is that sperm? I'm not eating that. Bishop, the brothers were beguiled by a cake with sperm. They were beguiled it. by the dumb woman. Stop listening to these dumb women, brothers. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. Her head is in Atlanta Housewives. Her head is up the cavity of the white man's behind. Now she comes to you. You don't got to listen to that Bible. Let's do a gender reveal baby shower. You go, okay. No. What did Christ say? If your right hand offends you, do what? You got to cut some of these. You got to cut them off. Cut them off. You, got, you men got to build your spirits up. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. I love me. So this is more filthiness of her abominations. Damn. All the sins that America says do, now you got Israelites trying to do it too. Damn. You came out of that, now you went right back into it. Give me the next picture. Give me the next picture. Yes. Here's the next one. You got our people following these demons right here. These are not the Jews. Christ said that is blasphemy. Read that in Revelation 2, 9. Revelation chapter 2, verse... Get mad. We don't give a damn gone. Right. Verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Christ said they're the synagogue of Satan. Next picture. And give me the next one. Now you got our people in Africa following them, yep. putting that stupid box on their head with that stupid dirty cloth around their neck with the damn Magan, uh, that, that stupid, uh, what is that thing called? The, the star of Rimfam talking about that's holiness. No. This goes right back to what we read. In her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Give me the next one. Mm -hmm. Give me the next one. Here's the next one in the school system. They teach us seven stages of human evolution. There is no God. You came from a monkey. There is no God. That's what they teach. Give me the next one. Then you got the transvestite. Protect black trans women. Protect us. We're women. You ain't no damn woman. Nigga. Talk about comb the hair on my chest. The hell is this? There's no revolution ever. Out. Hey, I need y'all to check history. Where in history did you see a group of women and trannies ever make a change or overthrow a system. It has never, ever happened in history. But the black transvestite 
And the less peons believe they're going to overthrow something. You ain't overthrowing a damn thing. Nope. Only thing you're overthrowing is your penis. <laughs> you had it ripped off. Damn. Now you want you got to respect my authority. The hell is wrong with you? Give me the next one. Black, gay, and lesbian. Leadership form. Because, wait. Because strong leadership leads to a stronger community. You see what they push on black people? Yep. No, no man at all. You won't see this in, uh, 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 even white folks reject, uh, their, when they got their training, they disrespect them constantly. Chinese don't go for this. East Indians don't go for this. I am sure as hell don't go for this. Only our people here, you can't make this stuff up. Give me the next one. Look at this. Northern Kingdom. Give me the next one. This still goes back to, in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Hey, Bishop. Yes. Didn't we see uh, a group of brothers go live with fringes on and yes. say, uh, when, this isn't Thanksgiving, y'all. This is Yahawashah Day. Right. And we got uh, collard greens with the pork in it and the ham and the fat. And it was proud to do that thing. Yes, sir. I remember same that. Same thing. Filth. Next one. Look at that. Baked pork pot. And if anybody's licking their lips, you need to be smacked. Repent. Give me the next picture. But I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. God ain't going to judge me for eating pork. Give me that. Yep. Isaiah 65. Here's the prophecy. There you go. Yes, sir. Uh, you want to start at 15, Bishop? Isaiah 66, 15? Nope. 65. Oh, 65. Isaiah 65. And I want 1 through 5. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 1. I am sought of of them that ask not for me. Mm -hmm. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. That's us, our people today. Because we're not called as Israel. We're called African American, Puerto Rican, Haitian, Jamaican, Brazilian, so forth and so on. Those new names the slave master gave us when they overcame us. Like it said in Revelation 13, and seven. Go ahead. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walketh in a way that was not good, after their own thoughts. See, our people walk after their own thoughts. And their thoughts is what the white man says. Go ahead. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, mm -hmm. that sacrificeth in gardens. In gardens and churches. And burneth incense upon altars of brick. Uh-huh which remain among the graves mm -hmm. and lodge in the, mo the monuments, which eat swine's flesh. Which what? Eat swine's flesh. Uh -huh. And broth of abominable things in the, is in their vessels. Go ahead. Which say, stand by, stand by thyself, come not near to me. No, brother, we don't need that. We don't need that uh, uh, way the Israelite teaching. We don't need to hear that. Go ahead. For I am holier than thou. I'm water baptized. I'm washed in the blood of the lamb. Go ahead. These are a smoke in my nose. Meaning God can't stand them. Go ahead. A fire that burneth all the day. Now we go to Isaiah 66 and 15. Isaiah 66. Start it. Start it. No, I want 17. Isaiah 66 verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, Eating swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh. And the abomination. And the abomination. And the mouse. And the mouse. Look on the screen. Put it back. The mouse, the possum is in the mouse family. You might think people don't eat that. They do eat that. No, they eat that. Down south, they got possum stew. Yep. They eat that. Read again verse 17. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Consumed together means destroyed together. God's going to do a whole lot of killing when Christ returns. Give me the next picture. Look at that. Lobster and shrimp. Where, hey, babe, where you want to go out? A red lobster? Red lobster? You, you. Give me the next picture. 
It's exquisite. Cockroach of the sea. Give me the next one. Now, go back to Revelation 13, uh, 17. Yes, sir. Verse 4 again, Bishop. Yes, please. Revelation chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So in her hand, in her hand was abominations and filthiness of her fornication. One word, brothers? Sin. Sin. Next verse. And upon her forehead. Now it talks about her forehead. What's in her mind? Go ahead. Was a name written. Was a name written. Remember what we, wait, read Revelation 13, the last 17. Revelation 13, 17. And that no man might buy or sell, say that he had the mark. Here come. Or the name of the beast. Or the name of the beast, the name of the beast. Now back to Revelation 17, 5. Revelation 17, 5. Here's the name of the beast. And upon her forehead was a name written. Was a name written. It's going to give you the name of the beast. Go ahead. Mystery. Uh -huh. Babylon the Great. The United States of America. Go ahead. The mother of harlots. The mother of harlots. And the abominations of the earth. And the abominations of the earth. So you love this. Put it up on the screen. God, what they have. God bless. That's in your mind. It's God bless America. That's in your mind. Give me the next one. Yeah, you're about to cry. Give me the next one. They got vote or die. You really got to support Joe Biden. You really got to support the Democrats. Are you kidding me? Give me the next one. We're going to make a change in the community. We're going to make a change. They want to stay in this country forever and ever. Next one. Okay. Feminism. Feminism. Give me the next one. All this is America. All this is America. We the people. In order to form a more perfect union. Establish justice and... Something domestic tranquility. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I remember. Provide for the common defense and all of that. Give me the next one. So, from there, so now that we've discussed the mark, the name, and the number, Matthew 12, 31. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin. All manner of sin. And blasphemy. And blasphemy. Shall be forgiven unto men. Because many times, like the Apostle Paul, he didn't believe in Christ. He didn't accept Christ. Some of us, before we heard the truth, we was blaspheming. Ah, the hell with that Bible. Some of our people to this day don't believe. Give them time. Go ahead. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall be forgiven unto men. And Wait, we'll read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all men of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Right, I knew, I knew something was wrong there. Yes, sir. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Let's go. I'm going to get a precept. No, no, read 32, then I'll get a precept. 32. 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost... It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world. You won't be forgiven in this world. Neither in the world to come. Y'all see that right there? That's damnation. You will not be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Damnation. Don't let these black Hebrew Israelites fool y'all and say you can stay in sin and get the kingdom. Do not let them fool you. Any of y'all follow that? Shame on you. Now, here's a precept to what we just read, Hebrews 6. And let's read 4 to 6, please. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6, and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. So now, it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Go ahead. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Uh-huh. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. See that? Now, remember what we just read in Matthew 12. If you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. You came into this truth. The Holy Ghost came in your heart, your soul. You believe this truth. You have the faith of Christ and you start keeping the commandments. That's the Holy Ghost. Then what happens? Go ahead. And have tasted the good word of God. You know the Bible is true. Go ahead. And the powers of the world to come. Watch this. If they shall fall away. Read it again. If they shall fall away. If you shall fall away. Meaning if you fall out this truth. Go ahead. 
to renew them again unto repentance. We cannot renew you again to repentance. Go ahead. Seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So that falling away means you die in your sins. You died in your sin. You are not going to be forgiven in the world to come. That's what he said. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Daniel 12 and 2. The book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust Meaning of the... Meaning those that have died. Read it again. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. You shall awake from your chambers. Go ahead. Some to everlasting life. That's what you want. Those who have died shall awake to everlasting life. Now watch this next part. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Damn, y'all see that right there? Some to shame and everlasting contempt. Everlasting contempt. Everlasting. You ain't going... There's no reprieve. There's no... Oh, now I'm good now. Oh, once that is done, it's done. Another word for contempt is what, brothers? Torment, Torment or damnation. Same thing. Give me John 5. Yes, sir. John 5, 24 to 29. Right. The Hebrew said it's impossible. We cannot renew you again. John 5, 24, Bishop. Uh, yes, sir. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. You see that? We want e everlasting life is eternal life. World dominion, world domination, power, godhood. We want that thing. Read it again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. That's what we want, everlasting life. Go ahead. And shall not come into condemnation. And shall not come into condemnation. But is passed from death. But is passed from death, meaning death in your flesh. Unto life. Eternal life. Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Like Lazarus did. Go ahead. For as the Father have life in himself, so have he given to the Son, so have he given to the Son to have life in himself. Come on. And have given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Read 27 again. And he and have given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Who's gonna execute judgment, brothers? Christ. Christ. Go ahead. Verse 28. Marvel not at this. For the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. For the hour is coming, in which, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Watch this. And, and shall come forth. Mm -hmm. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. They that have done good to the resurrection of life. That's what Daniel 12 and 2 said. Go ahead. And they that have done evil. And they that have done evil. Unto the resurrection of damnation. What's that word? Damnation. Damnation. We don't want that thing right there. Watch this. Romans 8 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So we got to stay in this truth. We got to stay in the faith of Christ and keeping the commandments. Read it again. There is, not, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's not saying that you're not going to stumble and fall in this truth. Because the scripture says, the righteous man falleth seven times and what? So David stumbled. Samson stumbled. They all stumble. We all make mistakes. We understand that. But once you decide in your heart, your spirit, I'm giving up on this truth. It's you finished. That's damnation. That's everlasting contempt. That's hellfire. That's that torment. That's that you shall know it after death by, what's that word? Pain. Pain. So read that again. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that's why you often say, brother, sister, stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Revelation 118, one more time. Watch this. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Pay very close attention. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. 
and have the keys of hell and of death. So Christ has the keys of hell and of death. Go ahead. Was that it? That was it, sir. Now, watch this. 21 and 8. Revelation. Chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that lake of fire right there, Christ has the keys to that thing. That's what I want you to understand. Christ has the keys to the lake of fire. Okay? Now watch this. Revelation 3, 7. Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, he and, that openeth the kingdom to and, Israel, and no man shut it, and no man can shut it from us, and shut it, and shut it, and no man openeth. It's shut to what we just read in Revelation. Go back to Revelation 21 and 8 again. Yes, Who is it shut to? Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, to have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Jump up to verse 7. Verse 7. He that overcometh. He that over. This is what all of us need to understand. He that overcometh. Shall inherit all things. Shall inherit all things. That's why I said, when it talks about eternal life, we're going to rule the world. We're going to rule a galaxy. Uh, Read it again. Right. Read it again. He that overcometh. He that overcometh. Shall inherit all things. Shall inherit all things. It means all things. Go ahead. And I will be his God. I will and, be his God. And he shall be my son. And he shall be my son. Go ahead. But the fearful. But the fearful brothers and sisters. And unbelieving. And you unbelieving brothers and sisters. And the abominable. And the abominable. And murderers. And murderers. And whoremongers. Whoremongers. And sorcerers. Sorcerers, you and, witches into horoscopes and Shango and Eligua. And, I, and idolaters. And you idol worshipers. And all liars. And all liars. Go ahead. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Which is the second But the question is, when is this going to happen? When is this going to happen? Revelation 19. Because we read in Job. That when we die, we had rest. Right. But then we're reading about torment and fire and judgment. Right. Christ got the keys to that. But when is the key to lake of fire going to be opened? Revelation 19, let's start verse 11. Yes, sir. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Pay and close I, attention. And I saw heaven open. And I saw heaven opened. And behold, a white horse. Can y'all put the images up? Y'all don't need to see me. Go ahead. And Read. Be, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called... Faithful and true. Uh -huh. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. What does Christ do? Judge, judge and make war. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And on his head were many crowns. You know that's the same thing in Exodus. Hold on. Exodus chapter 15 and 3. Right. Get right. that. Right. Yes, sir. For some reason people think it's a different God. No. It ain't. Read that. Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. He's a man of what? War. War. Now go back to Revelation 19. Revelation 11. 19 verse 11. Mm. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He does judge and make war. It's the same God brothers and sisters. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And on his head were <laughs> many crowns. And he had a name written. That no man knew, but he himself. So what you arguing about his name for? Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Because he's going to do a whole lot of killing. Go ahead. And his name is called the Word of God. He said, my name is the Word of God. Okay. Watch this. Go, give me that piece of Isaiah 63, 1 to 3. Yes, sir. About his garment being dipped in blood. Yes, sir. It said he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. What? Isaiah said the same thing. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 1. Uh -huh. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who with is this that cometh from Edom? Hey, give me Edom. Give me the map with Edom, Bozwa, all of that. I want the map. This that is glorious in his apparel. Right. This is it right here. That's the one I wanted. 
This that was glorious in his apparel. Go ahead. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Uh -huh. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Uh -huh. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Why you got all that blood on your clothes? Go ahead. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Uh -huh. I have trodden the wine press alone. You know when you're treading the wine press, you're stomping grapes. Christ said, I did all the killing of people by myself. Go ahead. I have treaded the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. I didn't need none of you people, none of you Israelites to help me at all. What verse was that? Verse 3. Four. Go, now go over to, uh, yes. I was just imagining the scene of Christ stepping on heads, skulls, stepping on rib cages and ribs breaking while he's smashing them. Yes. You got to think like that. Vertebrae are breaking. Jaws and all that's being turned to powder and blood splashing everywhere. That's some good stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's some good stuff. Exactly. <laughs> you want to finish three, Bishop? <laughs> oh, you didn't finish it? No, sir. Go ahead. I have tried in the wine press alone, and of the people that was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. Y'all see that? Their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. So when Christ comes, he's doing a whole lot of what, brothers? Killing. Yeah. Killing. Go ahead. And I will stain all my raiment. I will stain all my raiment. Was that it? That was verse 3. Yes, sir. Let's go back. Revelation 19. Revelation. And 13 again. Yes, sir. Revelation 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And, and he, notice what it says. Can y'all put the images of the blood and all that? We're talking about the blood on his garments. They put in church up there. I'm sorry, where you at, Cap? Verse uh, 13 again, Bishop. And, yeah. he was, and he was clothed with the vesta dipped in blood. Wait, I didn't see no blood. All right. Uh, where were you at, Cap? I'm sorry. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesta dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And his name is called the Word of God. Got it? And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Wait, wait, you know what that goes with? Real quick, um, side note. Go to 2 Ezra, I think it's chapter 2. 2 Ezra chapter 2 and verse 47. Yes, sir. 2 Ezra chapter 2, verse 47. So he answered and said unto me, it is the Son of God. It is the Son of God. Whom they have confessed in the world. That's what we read in Matthew 10 about confessing him before men. Right. At the fear of what? Death. Death. Go ahead. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. See that? Stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Back to Revelation 13, uh, 19 and 13. Revelation 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. That's what it's talking about. You got brothers fighting on the streets for right. Yehoshua, Yehoshai, uh, Jesus. Don't be fighting over these names. We speak English, brothers. If you want to speak Hebrew, that's fine. You don't say Yehoshua. I don't mind none of that. That's fine. Say it. But it says his name is called the word of God. We got to stand stiffly for this. Because the brothers that proclaim the divine name, they are adulterers. They are liars. They are haters of men. Okay. They are thieves. Tail bearers, murmurers, complainers. That's what you'll see in these Israelite camps. Infidels, right, infidels. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Go back, Revelation 13, I mean 19, I'm sorry. Revelation 19, verse 14. Uh -huh. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. So you had the angels in heaven following behind them. Now watch this. Hey, Cap, give me Sirach 43. It just said yes, the sir. armies which were in heaven followed him. Verse 8. Sirach chapter 43, verse 8. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changes. Uh -huh. being an, the moon, go ahead. Being an instrument of the armies above. Y'all see what the moon is? Read that part again. Being an instrument of the armies above. The moon is an instrument of the armies above. It's a base. It's a base. Now go back to Revelation 19, 14. Yes, sir. Revelation 19, 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, uh -huh. clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Mm -hmm. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it 
He should smite the nations, uh -huh. and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He gonna rule the nations with a rod of iron. Go ahead. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And he have on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm -hmm. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that, that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast. Here come, watch this. And I saw the beast. That's America, right? And the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth pay close attention. And their armies. And their armies. Gather together to make war against him. So these armies go to make war. No, take that down. We ain't at that part yet. I'm going to tell you when that come in. Read that part again. I'm sorry. They're messing me up here. Yes, sir. Verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So these armies, America, other militaries of the world, go to make war against Christ. Go ahead. Verse 20, and the beast was taken. And America's going to be taken. And with him, the false prophet. That's the entire church system. That's the false prophet. That wrought miracles. That did miracles. That's the science of dropping bombs, so forth and so on. Before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark the of mark the beast. The mark of sin. And them that worship his image. That worship his image. Watch this. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So wait a minute. When does the lake of fire appear? When Christ is on the scene. That's when the realm is open. That's when America, they, them souls go there. Some of the armies go. Now what, what, I want you to read that bottom part again. These what? These both, these both talking about the beast and the false prophet, go were ahead. cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now watch the next verse. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So notice verse 21. They weren't cast into the lake of fire. It said the beast and the false prophet was cast there. But the remnant, meaning the rest of those militaries, they were slain. But didn't say they was cast into the lake of fire. So, hmm, watch this. Let's talk about that lake of fire. Revelation 14. I want to talk about the lake of fire. That comes when Christ opens that realm up. That's why I say he has the keys of hell and death. Huh? Revelation 14 and 8? Yes. Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's the beast. That's the United States of America. Go ahead. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast. Any man worship the beast. You worship this white man? And his image. And you worship his image. And receive his mark in his forehead. And you receive his lies, his sin in your mind. Or in his hand. And you support that sin. Go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Watch this. And he shall be tormented. What, 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 what? And he shall be tormented with fire. With and, fire? And brimstone. And brimstone. And Come on. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So you see, that's what Christ said. I got the keys of hell and death. I'm the one that opens and no man shuts. It. I'm the one. So when he returns, he's going to open that realm. And every whoremonger, brother or sister... You liar, you, 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 you got to have good D, you going. And there's nothing we can do for you. We're going to see you on the other side, and there's nothing we can help you with. You keep on playing. Read. Verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Uh -huh. And they have no rest 
day nor night. You have no rest day nor night. Go ahead. Who worship the beast. Who worship the beast. And his image. And his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So that's what's going to happen right there. So now somebody might say, well, what about regeneration? Don't they come back? What do you think we can do worse than that? That I think that's worse. What do you think? They come, Esau, let's say Esau come back today. We get up. Let's say we're going to put him to death. We get up. Right. Ah, ah, ah. All we can do is kill a body. Yeah. But the Lord said, listen, the death I got yeah. for this group right here. Now, that ain't all he saw. That's the group here. Yeah. This group, he said, I'm casting them into the lake of fire immediately when I return. Now, from there, read verse 10 again. I just want to hear verse 10 again. Yes, sir. Revelation 14, 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire. Didn't and we read that in 2nd Ezra 9 yes, about being tormented? Then it said with fire. We've been reading about that fire all day. Christ was talking about hell fire. Go ahead. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now, from there, give me Matthew 3.12. Matthew, chapter 3, verse 12, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This unquenchable fire is what we've been reading about all day. When Christ come and destroy nations, he said, I'm going to cast some of y'all into the lake of fire immediately. You know what fan is? That, that makes the fire hot. It burns the fire. He's going to turn it up. Exactly. Isaiah 66, 15. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Mm. For by fire... And by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Christ's going to do a whole lot of killing. A whole lot of killing. Okay? From there, Revelation 20 and 5. Watch this. Watch what it says here. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. So, the rest of the dead live not again. Till a thousand years was finished. Give me Zechariah 13 and 8. The book of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land. In what? That in all the land. Is there an S there? No, sir. Because it's talking about Babylon the great. In all the land. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, mm -hmm. but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Mm. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. So one third is going to inherit their kingdom. But what about the two thirds? Go back to Revelation 20 and 5 again. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. That's when that one third gets taken up. Mm -hmm. On such the second death have no power. That second death, the lake of fire has no power over them. Go ahead. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Go ahead. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Mm -hmm. and We've shall, gone over this before, but let's just read down. And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Mm -hmm. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compass the camp of the saints about. That's Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39. Okay? And, and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven 
and devoured them. Now, verse 10 is what I want you to pay close attention to. Go ahead. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are. Stop. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Mm. They're already there. Right. Remember, this is a thousand years later. Yep. Waiting on the rest. Waiting on the rest. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night forever and And shall and be ever. tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, we're going to come right back here in a second. Give me uh, John 5.22. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 22. For the Father judges no man. The Father, God the Father judges no man. Go ahead. But have committed all judgment unto the Son. You see that Christ is going to do all the judging, brothers and sisters. Not the Father. The Father just chilling. He's sitting back. He's letting his Son, Christ, do everything. Now back to Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. So when Christ come on the scene in his power, his majesty, nobody got nothing to say. Go ahead. Everything shuts down. Go ahead. And there was found no place for them. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Stand before Christ. Go ahead. And, and the books were opened. Mm -hmm. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead the which sea. were in it. Those that died in the sea, those spirits which raised up and resurrected. Go ahead. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So the death and hell. Hold on, I'm going to show you what the death and hell is. Go to Revelation 6 and I think it's 8. Revelation 6. Verse 8. Yes, sir. And 8. Revelation 6, verse 8. And I look, and behold, a pale horse, and his name, and his name that sat on him was death and hell. Follow with him. Watch this. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword. Those that were killed with the sword. And with hunger. Those that were killed with hunger. And with death. And with death. And with the beasts of the earth. And with the beasts of the earth, like zoonosis, for example. So go back. Revelation 20 and 14. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. And death and hell. Chapter 13, I mean 13, verse 13. I'm sorry. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So those that were killed by war, it said sword, famine. What else does it say? Beasts of the earth, of the earth. and death like disease. Yes, Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So all is going to end. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, Revelation 21 and 8 again. Revelation chapter. I want 7 and 8 again. Revelation 21 verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Mm -hmm. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm. So now the question might be, why doesn't the Lord judge everybody at the same time when he returns? Why does he wait for a thousand years? Then he cast people into the uh, lake of fire. Put the thing in about how many people on the earth. Read that, Cap. Yes, sir. How many people are on earth in 2023? Is that 8, 8, 45, 411, So that's a rough estimate that Esau came up with, mm -hmm. right? So the question is that I'm posing, why does he do it all at once? That's the same thing Ezra's asked. Go to 2 Ezra 4 and 40. Second Edra chapter 4 and verse 40. Mm -hmm. So he answered me and said, Go thy way to a woman with child, and ask of her when she hath fulfilled her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer within her. Then said I, No, Lord, 
that she cannot, that, that can she not. And he said unto me, in the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. Stop. Look at that. It says, in the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. Meaning what? Those souls that were in the grave come back. Just like a woman gives birth, when the dead, they come back. But guess what? The group that goes into the lake of fire, they don't come back. They stay right there. Now watch this. What verse was that, Cap? That was verse uh, 41, Bishop. That was 41, read. Verse 42. For like as a woman that travaileth, maketh haste to escape the necessity of the travail, even so do these places haste to deliver those things that are committed unto them. They haste to give those spirits back up, have them come back. But now watch this. Go to chapter 5 and 41. Second Andrew chapter 5, verse 41. And I said, Behold, O Lord, Yet art thou nigh unto them that be reserved till the end. And what shall they do that have been before me? What shall those souls do that have been before me? There are generations of people that was before Ezra. He's asking what about them. Go ahead. Or we. Because be sometimes we think that everybody on the planet now, that's everybody. This is not everybody. Mm. There are generations before us. Way before us. Read. Read that again. Yes, sir. And I said, behold, O Lord. Yet art thou nigh unto them that be reserved to the end. And what shall they do that have been before me? Or we that be now? Or they that shall come after us? So Ezra said, you have groups, before, nations before us, nations of men before what? us, generations. Yep. The generation that's currently living. What? And he said, there's generations after us. What about those three groups? Go ahead. And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring. Mm. Like as there is no slackness of the last... Even so, there is no swiftness of the first. So judgment is like a steady rotation. Everybody got to get it. Everybody gets it. Go ahead. What verse was that? That was verse 42, Bishop. 42? Yes, sir. Read. Verse 43. So I answered and said, Couldest thou not make those that have been made and be now and that are for to come at once? Do everything at once. Go ahead. That thou, might, that thou might, mightest show thy judgment the sooner? Mm -hmm. Then answered he me and said, the creature may not haste above the maker. Neither may the world hold them at once that shall be created therein. The angel said the planet can't hold everybody at one time. That's why when we read, he said, this group, I'm casting into the lake of fire. Right. This other group, I'm just going to kill y'all. But then he said, a thousand years later, he said, now I'm going to get this group here. Right. Everything can't be done at once. He said, I can't, you can't get them all at once. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Are y'all ready for this? Ain't nobody on the planet teaching this. Ain't nobody on the planet teaching this here. Yes. And, and it's crystal clear. Oh, no, no, no. no. And, then, and then when those other groups come up and then they go, he said the false prophets, are, the false prophet and the demons are already there waiting. Mm -hmm. So there's a group out of every generation that he's putting there. Yep. And when another group comes, he's going to add y'all to it. Until all of the generations are taken care of and in that lake of fire to be done forever. That's right. First Corinthians 15. When was done? When was done? Yes, sir. Started, you want to start at 23, Bishop? Uh, 22. 22. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. Mm -mm. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Uh -huh. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So notice, every man in his own order. There's no such thing as equality. Everyone's going to be in their order. Go ahead. Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Uh, the Father. Mm -hmm. Even the Father. Mm -hmm. When he shall have put down all rule. When Christ puts down all rule. And all authority and power. When Christ subdues all. Everything on the planet. Go ahead. For he must reign. For Christ must reign. Till, the, till he have put all enemies under his feet. Uh huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That's what we just read in Revelation 20. Go ahead. For he that put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted. Meaning the Father is accepted. He's not, the Father is not being subject under Christ. Read the verse again. Yes, sir. For he hath put all things under his feet. The, for he the Father, he put all things under Christ's feet. Go ahead. 
But when he saith, all things are put under him. But when he saith, all things are put under Christ. It is manifest that he is accepted. It is manifest that the Father is accepted, meaning accept the Father. Go ahead. Which did put all things under him. Which did put all things under Christ. Go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him. Then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. That God may be all in all. When Christ subdues everything, then he's going to submit everything to the Father. That's why he said, what we read earlier, he said, the Father judges no man. But he has committed all judgments to the Son. Christ is the God of this earth. Christ is the God. Like I said in John, when people get all discombobulated, oh, why say Christ is God? Because he created everything. We read that. We have many classes on that. So now, once Christ subdues everything, everything submits to his father, okay? Like a son would do. The, father, the son goes out, conquers everything, brings all the rewards to the father. What verse was that? That was verse 28, 1 Corinthians 15. That was verse 28? Yes, sir. Give me Philippians 3. Philippians 3, 16. <clears throat> the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 16. Nevertheless... Where to we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Hey, 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 hey. Don't run by that. Read that again. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained. We got this knowledge, this understanding. Go ahead. Let us walk by the same Wait, can rule. Wait, can we start at 15? Yes, sir. Verse 15. Let us therefore. Let as, us therefore. As many as be perfect. As many as be perfect, meaning as many as walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Be thus minded. Be thus minded. And if, and, if in, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Go ahead. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let all of us, brothers and sisters, walk by the same rule. That's God's laws. Go ahead. Let us mind the same thing. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. He said, mark those as you have us for an example. Watch those who are keeping the commandments. Take good note of them. Those men, those women that are following the example. Go ahead. For many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. He said, for many walk, of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Those are your adulterers. Your liars, your thieves, your drug users, drug abusers, your haters, your child molesters. And some of them are sitting in here among us. Some of them are online right now. Read that verse again. Verse 18. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, uh -huh. whose end is destruction. Whose end is destruction, like we read earlier. Now, during this time, he's referring to, of course, the scribes and Pharisees and them. But those are dumb dudes, wicked as hell. Read that again, I'm sorry. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Whose God is their belly. It's always give me, what can I get from this? Give me, give me, give me. All about me. And whose glory is in their shame, mm -hmm. who mind earthly things. Those men, those women mind earthly things. Go ahead. For our conversation is in heaven. Our talk, our conversation should be in heaven. Our talk, our conversation should be in this Bible. Now, I know it ain't easy to always talk about the scriptures, but guess what? We got to train ourselves for that. Just like you have trained yourself to talk about sports stats. Some of y'all know every stat, and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you seen his stats, brother? He, did, he scored this, he scored that. He was born on this day. What the hell? Who gives a damn about that? Who gives a... F uh, uh. <laughs> a boop? Yeah, frying filth. Frim. Read that again. Verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we look for, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Who shall change our vile body. Ooh, that's what I wanted to get to. Who shall change our vile. All our bodies are vile. These bodies we got are broken and sickly, filled with pestilence, disease, sickness, and is destined to die, to corruption. Read that again. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's that celestial, that God body. That celestial, that God body is what we want. 
Come on. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Christ is going to subdue all things unto himself. Isaiah 41, and we almost done. Let's start at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant. Thou, Israel, you're my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen. Jacob, whom I have chosen. Go ahead. The seed of Abraham, my friend. Abraham's our friend. Just like we read about Lazarus was taken into the bosom of Abraham. Right. Mm -hmm. God called Abraham his friend. He didn't call nobody else his friend except Abraham. Burn. Go ahead. Thou, whom I have taken from the ends of the earth mm. and called thee from the chief men thereof. Meaning he's going to call us from all these kingdoms. Go ahead. And said unto thee, thou art my servant. Mm -hmm. I have chosen thee. And not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Right, that's Christ. So now notice what he says. He says, fear not, fear thou not, I'm with you. Don't be dismayed, don't be worried, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's Christ, okay? Behold, all they that were in incensed against thee. All they that were in hate, had hatred against us. Shall be ashamed and confounded. Those nations, those people shall be ashamed and confounded. Go ahead. They shall be as nothing. See that? They shall be as nothing. Go ahead. And they that strive with thee shall perish. All those nations, those people, those organizations that strive with us shall Perish every last one of them, right? Thou shalt seek them and shall not find he them. He said, You're gonna look for them, but they're gonna be gone. Go ahead. Even them that contend with thee, even them that fight with you, they that war against thee shall be as nothing mm. and as a thing of naught. Those nations that people that war with us shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Go ahead. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand. He said, I'm gonna hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. I will help thee. Saying, fear not, I will help thee. Go ahead. Fear not, thou worm Jacob. Wait, what does he call us? F fear not, thou worm Jacob. He calls us that worm again. We are a worm, brothers and sisters. That's why he said, now another scripture, he said, where their worm die, if not, that's your soul. Right, right. Read that again. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. Mm -hmm. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and, re and thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel, uh -huh. behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument. Hey, hey that's that new body. Remember we read, we get rid of this vile body, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a new body, that celestial God body. Right. Read that again, verse Be 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Uh. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. We're going to thresh the governments, go ahead. And beat them small. We're going to beat them small. And shall make the hills as chaff. And we're going to make the small countries as chaff. We're going to destroy them too, go ahead. Thou shalt fan them. We're going to fan them like you fan fire, go ahead. And the wind shall carry them away. They're going to be beat down so bad, the wind going to be able to blow these nations away, go ahead. And the whirlwind shall scatter them. And the whirlwind shall scatter them, go ahead. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord. And shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! And with that, we say shalom. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 